Ricky. Raymond, my boy. Uh, we got Tyler's in. Cool, cool. Uh, we're missing Aaron now. Aaron bailed on us. He lives here. Uh, are we up on the page already, Tyler? <coughs> Fuck. I'm enough of that shit. I don't know what's wrong with my throat. I jogged up to the store, dude. My throat is just jacked up now. It's on the BB, uh, the ABB page, right? All right, cool. I'm gonna check it out. Yeah. What's up, Rose? Can I do, uh, can I do a? We are live. Hello, guys. Welcome to the Anonymous Show. Got a couple special guests with us today. I am Arthur Wolf. I'm Rosie. I'm Jay. I'm Ray. Mark, I'm just me. <laughs> just me. <laughs> we got a special show today. I believe we're going to do a little shout out uh, for the uh, anonymous we uh, lost recently. Anybody yes, got anything Amy. they'd like to say about her? Is, is that Amy? Um, yeah, Amy. yeah. Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, yeah, uh, she passed I, away really tragically. Wait, let's get a name. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm drawing a blank on the name. That's my Amy, bad. Amy Wicks. Um, she was an That's activist, right. and she was a big proponent of uh, prisoners' rights. And uh, she was uh, – I, I worked with – I met her a few years ago um, doing uh, uh, some work uh, against uh, CCA, the Corrections Corporation of America. And uh, she was quite beneficial in pointing us in the direction of, of some valuable information. Um, and – and uh, just some stuff that really helped us along. She was willing to help. I didn't know her. I actually met her through Jeremy Dieter um, at the time, who was the one that broke the news of her passing. Um, but she was more than willing to help without, uh, without any hesitation. Um, I didn't know her all that well, other than, than working with her that, that uh, short period of time for a couple of weeks. But uh, she was definitely a really good person from, from what I understand and, and from, from what I knew of her. So, you know, big shout out, rest in peace. Of course, rest in peace. I didn't know her much myself either, but I've heard good things. Like you said, she was an activist, you know, she was out doing her part, just like the rest of us, and unfortunately came to a tragic end on her part. And uh, she was shot, right? Is that what happened? I believe so, and I, I believe I believe that they had taken in her ex-boyfriend um, into custody at one, I don't know. Um, I don't know what the final outcome is. I don't want to speculate on anything either. I don't have any solid facts, but regardless, it's tragic. But yeah, it, it was definitely caused uh, by a gun, and apparently she was very anti-firearms. So um, right. there's there's some suspicion around it, but I, I won't get into detail because I don't have any solid information to go on b beyond the fact that I know she has passed away, and it was due to uh, a a bullet was was the reason. So where it came from, I don't know at this point. All right. So yeah, there was, Okay, go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say there was um, one or two threads um, of the speculation of how, um, of her passing, and I know that Jeremy was going to update everybody once he gets a little more information. Okay. Yeah. And Jeremy's a really good guy, very knowledgeable individual as well. He's done uh, he's done a lot. Um, he uh, kind of an independent journalist kind of type of guy. So. Um, he, he, he probably wouldn't pass any information unless it was relevant. So if mm -hmm. you hear any updates, for sure, they're, they're definitely worth uh, at least investigating. Anybody have a hashtag name they can share in the chat so we can you know, get it out on Twitter? Who's the what now? What do you to want? To share the name or a hashtag of the one. Oh, oh of the show? No. No. Oh, uh, Amy. never mind. I get what you're saying. A I'm off her in name, yeah. her, her name was Amy Wicks. Uh, Amy, A-M-Y uh, Wicks, W-I-C-K-E-S, I believe. Yes. Yes, any any of our viewers, um, uh, feel free to put uh, her uh, her URL link to her Facebook page on the, on the comments. I'll go, I'll go post her um, Facebook um, information and the information for her visual on the page right now. Okay. Thank you, Rose. Thank you, you know, Rose. When uh, when I first heard about it, I actually the first thing that because of the way that she uh, 
because of the type of activism activism that she had been involved in, I I had some some strange thoughts go to my head, conspiracy theories, I guess you could call them. But uh, I was happy to be proven wrong. Not that it's any, you know, consolation to her loss of life, but uh, you know, because of what she was involved in, I I actually worried that maybe she had you know succumbed to uh, something deeper than uh, than what it was. But uh, I I don't think that's the case whatsoever. So. <clears throat> I can't tell if it's just me, my shit is foggy, or if it's tripping me out. Sorry, guys, yeah, I'm you're, having you're technical difficulties. Oh, it doesn't, doesn't worry. Um, for tonight's um, viewers, I put on a special pick for tonight, so kind of threw this on at the last minute, in case you guys are wondering why we're not doing the normal format. I was noticing there's some new things popping up and such. You mentioned something about the show being a, on a new some link or I don't know what you said something different this time something like that <clears throat> mm -hmm. so tonight we also have a special guest you want to introduce yourself well um, am I the special guest <laughs> <laughs> yes sir yes yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, well uh, my name is uh, Ray Johansson uh, I'm a pirate activist uh, I work with, uh, well, a lot of people, but sometimes I work with uh, Lori Love or the campaign to, uh, you know, help Lori Love not get extradited to the U.S. Um, I'm also, did I say that? A pirate? I heard uh, pirate. Yeah. Yes, I heard pirate. I heard pirate. I, 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 would, I would hope we're all pirates around here in some way, shape, or form. Okay. Uh, internet but, pirates. Uh, the, the the pirate party is is pretty interesting. It was nice to see the uh, the showing that they had in uh, in Iceland. Um, what did you think about that, Raymond? About their their, their showing in Iceland there? They well, made a lot of waves. It, it was like a new record. They got voted on uh, by lots of people, like ten and a half percent or something. Uh, all well, I am at the board of uh, Pirate Parties International. We have uh, members from 70 different countries, and the years before that, it was like 0.8 percent to 1.2 percent uh, votes. Uh, and when they had this great showing in Iceland, uh, well, we all felt good, and we're really positive for it for the future, right? You know yes, what I'm, I, I'm in Canada myself, and uh, I believe that there is a Pirate Party of Canada as well. Oh yes, oh yes. Yeah. Our, uh, our you guys are all over, right? Uh, yeah, like I said, seventy-eight countries. Uh, 78. In Canada, we have uh, co-chair of uh, our parties, Ms. is uh, Bailey Lamont. Okay. Um, so, well, Canada is a strong point. Excellent. Good to hear. Uh, we have. You know, pretty good values here. Um, although our political system at the moment is flawed, just like everywhere else. Um, really? You know, we we don't have a, a two-party system per se, but uh, in, in essence, we we kind of do. But uh, you know, those types of things, uh, I would like to see uh, gain more momentum here. I think people in Canada are pretty open to that kind of stuff. But at the same time, I think with America being kind of our big brother, it holds us back. In, in that kind of regard, but uh, you know, they, they definitely have my support. Well, it, it, uh, this is the thing. Uh, from our parties all, all over the world, there, because Canada has a really, really great, uh, I don't know, outlook. Is that English, right? Yep. Outlook yes, on, yes. Uh, universal basic income. You know, when uh, all the robots take over our mm -hmm. uh, jobs, well, we really need to have some kind of income. And uh, Sweden and Canada is actually the, uh, the best on, on defining what universal basic income uh, is and what we need to make that happen. Well, we, we were definitely looked upon as a, a quasi-socialist state for a long time. Um, we spent 10 years under a, a very right-wing, very conservative government um, that has actually done a lot of damage uh, like in, in Canada, uh, not just to rights, but to, to business, um, businesses as well. 
uh, the privatization of, of a lot of uh, crown corporations and allowing a lot of Canadian companies to be sold to uh, actually the Chinese government and stuff. But uh, more of a more a border on socialism in a lot of ways. Um, I, I really feel that uh, you know social programs um, are the backbone to society and being able to. People always talk about unity and stuff, but uh, you know then when it comes time to uh, help each other out everybody's complains about paying taxes um, mm. to help out people that are in a different situation, we'll call it. And, uh, you know, um, they, they complain about socialism, but yet they, they want, uh, they want unity. Um, you know, socialism, when people think of socialism, a lot of times they think of, you know, uh, uh, the Soviet union or China, but there are lots of socialist countries. Um, Raymond, are you Norwegian? Yeah, I, I was, you know, hoping to jump in here. Is that okay? Yes, yeah, go that's ahead. That's perfectly fine. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I grew up in a country which is, is called social democratic. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not really communist in any way. It's social democratic, like uh, Bernie Sanders, for fuck's sake. For fuck's yeah. sake. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Bernie Sanders. Yeah, and, and we grow up, if you don't mind, we grow up with the thinking that, okay, we pay taxes, like 28 to 35% of taxes. We get free schools for our children. We get free health care. Uh, and we pay, you know, taxes to make sure that everybody, not just yourself, get health care, you know. Uh, and that's completely and utterly natural to us. Completely and utter, utterly natural. And when we hear the discussions of Obamacare and shit in the, uh, in the Americas, we just don't, don't get it. What the fuck? Neither do well, we. Well, Neither trust do we. us. There's a lot of Americans <laughs> that don't trust and, and like Obamacare you know, as well. I think I think maybe the essence of Obamacare um, had roots in, in something worthwhile. I think it was more the way it was rolled out. Um, a lot of considerations, from what I understand myself not being an American, I, but talking to a lot of Americans, the way that was rolled out, a lot of things were considered, like the fact that insurance companies were then going to put the onus on people that actually do buy and can or are considered able to afford insurance. And, you know, I mean... Uh, penalizing people that can't afford insurance now that we're just regular everyday blue collar people a am i right guys uh, well i mean yeah, I, well i mean i know my brother being a white collar uh, his insurance with obama just skyrocketed i mean even to the point to where it was very hard for him to make ends meet you know for him and his own family yeah yeah, I, I have a couple of really, really, really good friends uh, in the States. Actually, my wife's American. Um, and uh, I, I've, I've heard that from a lot of people. Um, one of them is a, is a business owner. He owns a small business. And I know that uh, it, it's had a, a crippling, maybe not crippling, but it's had a, definitely an adverse effect on him. Um, but, you know, I think the whole theory, like Raymond was saying, um, same as in Canada, like we have universal health care. Um, our education, compared to a lot of places, is fairly well subsidized, although, like I said, the 10 years of, of conservative rule kind of, you know, put a, a, a dent in some of that as well. But, uh, you know, if you look at a country like uh, Switzerland, uh, where they have no natural resources, but they say that their biggest natural resource is people, and they invest into people, and it, it's not – people don't mind paying – high taxes if you get a return from them. But the problem in, in a place like Canada or America or Great Britain is that those taxes are never appropriated properly. They're always, exactly. <laughs> you know, misspent. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Do you mind if I, you know, jump in? Yeah, go you... ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, whenever you have fucking politicians uh, spending money, uh, everything will get misappropriated to an extent, uh, but the, the countries you, uh, you know, made as an example, Switzerland, Norway, whatever, uh, the point is we don't pay uh, a really, really big 
big part of our ta uh, paycheck in taxes. We pay, like I said, 28 to 35 uh, percent get what we have. Uh, in the U.S., you pay less, uh, you know, real taxes, but you actually pay more because you have to buy on top of your taxes. Uh, what do you call it? Health care? Yes. And that's a yeah. lot of money. And so you have to add the two, the two numbers, right? Yeah. It, ultimately, right. you're paying less. You're paying less. Yes, I am. That, that's my whole point. I'm paying less. And still, uh, the, the people that live next to me, even the people that try to live on the street, gets picked up and help. And I feel good about it. I, so, I would feel good about it, too. So, am I a communist? No. You're a Thank socialist. You. I think there's a bit of a difference. You know, yeah. I think that people associate communism and socialism very closely because they think of you know, socialism, like I said earlier, is like Stalin, Russia, Marxism kind of thing where, you know, that, that was definitely a corrupt version of what was supposed to, you know, what was portrayed to people. Uh, but I, like I said, myself, I consider myself a socialist. And I actually, yeah. I actually live in a very right wing part of the country. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, should we move on from this topic to something else? Question mark? Question mark? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever's clever, bro. What else Low do we have the on wind, the agenda? Man. I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> it's whatever I'm comes to the top guess. of your head. I, I'm I, just I, a guest. This is my first time on the show, so I, uh, I'm just kind of going going with the flow here yeah has anybody I, gotten anything new about uh that vault seven at all uh i've been reading a little bit about it but i'd like to hear what people have to say kind of work off of that you know um that's kind of the big one all over social media all over the news all over everything is vault seven so that's kind of all i've heard about we can do okay. something different uh, okay um i would love to hear uh what uh north americans think about Vault 7, and then I can jump in because I know quite a lot about it. Do you? I, I, I honestly, it, it, it's, you know, it doesn't disturb me, and, I, you know, I've known for years that, you know, you know, they've been monitoring and stuff like that, but the fact that this stuff is built into our devices, is that, that's what that's all about, right? Right, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. anything that has a built-in camera or microphone or any sort of device, since, you know, what is it? I think they said 2011 or was it 2013 when they started doing this? Probably much longer, obviously, but like it's got to be a, a big thing, I think. It was actually 2007, and uh, he's absolutely correct. It is built into everything. Even when everything. You, so, exactly. so it's embedded. It's actually embedded into the firmware, yes. into the chips. Even in your smart TVs. Your smart TVs have that tech in them as well. I hope they're I mean, EEPROM so we can so we can change it. <laughs> even even with your cell phone, if you turn off your uh, location, it it basically means nothing. Turning that off, they can still they can still ping your cell phone and and track you to almost your precise location. And if right. I'm if I'm not mistaken, Snowden was talking about this earlier this year. Am I right? Well, yes, yeah, that's, he was. that's that's what I was going to say is that I mean, this shouldn't come as like. I actually haven't read that much into the, the Vault 7, and frankly, the reason I haven't is because it's all stuff that, from what I've heard from other people talking about, so I guess I'm kind of speculating, but uh, you know, most of them are pretty knowledgeable people. Um, but these are things that I've always just kind of <laughs> had. I, I, I mean, I've had tape over the camera on my laptop since like 2009, you know do you what think, I mean, and, and stuff this, like. That. Do you think any of this technology is related to that that uh, data center that the NSA has over in uh, Utah? You know, the one that right. the mega it's massive. Yeah, it's, it's massive. massive. It's so massive. I would think I would think that it definitely correlates one hundred percent to that. I mean, to think that these agencies don't uh, don't correspond with one another would be naive to think that they don't share information. Um, right. Because they definitely they definitely do, um, and I mean it was proven. It was proven in the Snowden leaks just how far they would go. So to be surprised by it, I mean, I see a lot of people freaking out, but 
I mean, I, I just, I'm not surprised by any of it. That's, that's kind of my standpoint. And that's kind of why I haven't looked that deeply into it because the things that I've theorized, I, I don't think I'm going to find anything different in there than things that I've already suspected or so, just so kind of assumed. So you're saying that they've, that the, our own government has gone to the manufacturers and to put this stuff in even before we buy it. Absolutely. Well, yeah. Yeah. I, I believe definitely. That. Look at, yeah, look at the way corporations and lobby groups and, and, and the way they're connected to governments all together. Like it, it, it's, there's no, you know, I mean, corporations write laws now. So, yeah, definitely. I definitely think so. You know, Barrett Brown touched on this in 2011. Uh, if you Google Barrett Brown Metal Gear, in part, this is what he's speaking about and some of the technologies and methodologies used in surveillance of citizens. How yes. cool is that? Does anybody mind if I speak now? Oh, go ahead. Go right ahead. Uh, if you remember, uh, seven minutes back, I asked you, hmm. uh, what does the North Americans think about the WikiLeaks uh, CIA blast, right? Yes. And you all talked amongst yourself, and you figured out that, oh, my God, they're everywhere. Um, but what do you guys think about how this affects your uh, IT industry, Silicon Valley? Uh, you, uh, the U.S. and Canada's ability to make money. Do you think uh, the rest of the world, which is 95% of the world, how do you think we will think about you? Do you think we will keep buying your fucking software no. or will we stop? Yeah. No, I, yeah, I think that I've, I would hope that they would stop. I would, I would hope so because the, I think the only way, you know, to, to put a dent in it is, is to actually have an, a financial effect on on these industries because if they are not receiving any type of penalty then what's you know what's persuading them from from doing so and you know cohorting with uh, you know government's illegal um, illegal spying on citizens on a global level because I mean, it's funny, the internet has definitely changed things, but if countries were to spy, if a spy was to get caught uh, in the 1960s doing the type of, of espionage that these tech companies are doing now, they would have been tried for treason and killed. Absolutely. Uh, so, you know, can, I would, I would, can I do the next question? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So this thing happened. Somebody leaked the fucking CIA documents and the software, the malware, all over the dark web, right? Uh, that's how WikiLeaks got it. Then we're just waiting for, you know, every cyber criminal in the world to buy pieces of these, you know, attack things and softwares and everything. You know, to put it in, a, I don't know, a way everybody could understand. What's going to happen next? Do you think Russia is going to buy the software and attack the U.S. back? Uh, what's going to happen? Well, hmm. I, I mean, do I think that Russia has some interest in, in what America does? For sure, I definitely Absolutely. do. I also think, though, that Russia is is you know, demonized and probably has a lot more homegrown concerns um, than mm -hmm. they're, they're more concerned with, more so than the paranoia that the, the American government fosters amongst people. I totally yeah, I'm agree. sure they don't just sit there and sit back and be like, yeah, we're just going to destroy the world. <laughs> they're not Dr. Evil, you know? Our, our country demonizes anybody that doesn't have their same views. That's exactly. why I hate America. Putin but, is not worried about America at all. You know, uh, the nor is he a bad guy. Countries aren't no, worried nor about is he a bad us. guy, exactly. Look at China. China's not worried about us. I, I'm, most third world countries don't even worry about us. They they see what we worry what ourselves. Us see. They see what most of us see that we're destroying ourselves. They don't have to destroy us. Oh, but God forbid mm -hmm. you have oil in your country, then they send troops over there. Absolutely. You know, it's all that fear mongering. They just want to come and take over. That's all they're really doing. They want the citizens to be afraid so that we will allow them to go to war. 
But you know, That's... it's not just it's not just America either, though. I mean, these threats are definitely on a global level. It's just that America is is the perpetrator at this point in time. They're 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 the ones uh, going out and acting on it. But uh, you know, these these threats could definitely on, on people's privacy. They could they could become real threats from anywhere. Should should a country to choose, and I think maybe that's kind of what I don't know for sure if that's what Raymond was uh, was getting at. But you know um, that technology, if it gets out, what's to stop other governments from doing it? Especially if they can buy that technology at a bargain basement price too. You mean like and North then, Korea? That would be kind of dangerous. <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly, who's not to say that they're already doing it as well? I, yeah, they probably yeah. They are. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That's so. You know, that's so I mean, cool that you said that. Yeah, because I mean, you know, the technology is out there. Well, look and, at look uh, at Egypt and Tunisia and places like that during the Arab Spring, and you know the like uh, you know the way that they were being monitored over there uh, during during like uh, their uprising over there and stuff. Um, you know, so they're they may have been uh, fairly uh, fairly uh, you know under the radar techniques compared to what what is, what the CIA has done but you know they, that's because maybe they didn't need that high, that much technology to uh, to implement their spying on people then but it, it's not to say that there aren't governments in the world that that definitely have an interest in it well uh, can i do my next question <laughs> yes <laughs> it's like it's like <laughs> this after seeing the WikiLeaks CIA, uh, well, leaks. Do you fear uh, Russia or Putin more than you fear the CIA, the U.S.? I fear our own government more wait, than wait, anybody wait, else. Wait, wait, wait. If you were living in a different country than the U.S.? Well, Putin hasn't overthrown democratically elected governments throughout South America. Um, he hasn't invaded uh, Middle Eastern countries over uh, oil and only oil and oh, and opium, and then forced uh, you know agriculture um, through Monsanto on nations like uh, like Afghanistan. So I definitely, I mean, I fear the CIA more than I fear Russia. What about you other guys? Sorry? What about you other guys? Uh, what is our I, view on Russia? Yeah, or? I, I would have to I would have to say that I I honestly sorry I'm quiet, I'm just listening. I would say that I fear the CIA more than Putin and um again Jay touched a lot of the same things that I would have said. Basically, the CIA, there's no boundaries. They're not holding themselves back. No, it's, they they're care. going above and beyond, and they have for years. Um, mm -hmm. But they're not the only against their own that's, citizens. They're not the only country that's doing that. Uh, uh, Israel has the Mossad. Has the, yeah, the Mossad or the Mossad. Mossad, mm -hmm. Mossad that's, mm -hmm. that's just, the, if not worse, than our own CIA. But it's hard to deny the connection between Israel and America. How, how is it not? It, it's, it's, it's very, it's very, it's very simple to see the connection because look at everything that's owned over here in America. Everything is owned by the by the Israels. I mean, you got media. Who's who's running the media over here in America? Yeah, the Jewish dude, people. Yeah, dude. Let's 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 take that away because Israel and the U.S. is the same thing. Yeah. Right. So, exactly. Yeah, so mm -hmm. so let's let's see. Uh, do you think the country that is called the U.S. is more dangerous than Russia, uh, knowing full well knowing that since 1961 uh, the U.S. have tried to destabilize 83 democratic elected governments all over the world, most of them socialist. On top of it, yeah, of course. <laughs> I would I I consider the United States extremely dangerous to other countries. And it's, Rose, it's sad where are you from? we're a US citizen. Oh Rose, sorry? Where Rose, where where are you? Um from? I'm actually from the West I'm from the West Coast United States. Okay. Cool. West Coast. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. I think the people I think the people that I've met on the West Coast are, are a lot late more laid back. 
uh, than maybe say the Bible Belt of the United States. I've definitely had better yeah, interactions yeah, with. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, because I'm one in the Bible. America. I live in a Bible state. <laughs> I live in a very Republican, patriotic community. Mm -hmm. um, being an activist, we're completely outnumbered here. Um, but again, that's what you expect for Arizona. Um, it's a state where there's open carry. Um, for example, today we had cops block down our whole street, um, pointing high-powered machine guns at people's front doors and shutting down a whole street, knocking on people's doors, trying to get them to leave. I mean, that's the kind of state Arizona is. And that's because uh, the way the gun laws are set up now. I, I agree with people have a right to bear arms, but it's like the Wild West here. We are cowboys, darling. <laughs> just sorry was that the wrong thing to say there but it's it's the west coast uh we're a bunch of bible thumping gun toting you know shoot them kill them eat them kind of people uh, I mean, not I all live, of us I obviously north of where you're living man, or you know near the bible belt and i can tell you one thing shit, shit is dangerous up here man <laughs> yeah i live in the murder capital man <laughs> But what's that? You know, from from outside, I know that Chicago is the murder capital. Last year, seven hundred and seventy, yeah, uh, seven hundred twelve. We had, had twenty seven hundred shootings last year. Exactly. Arizona had close to five hundred and sixty um, police shootings where they were shooting unarmed people last year. That was one of our biggest tackles as activists in the community. Was the significant amount of unarmed people, um, people with mental disabilities, um, cops are using an excessive amount of lethal force. Wow, and I thought things were bad here because we had 15. <laughs> no, 15? It, it's, it's bad. Oh. It's bad, like anybody today wanna, they literally uh, had sniper rifles. Anybody want to hear how many we had in Norway? Sure. Sure. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, it was seven. <laughs> See, that's amazing. And one died. There was one that died. Oh, fuck. Social democracy, eh? Uh -huh. <laughs> you guys have some pretty good music up there, too. You know? Oh, a lot, of, lot, of good, a lot of good metal comes out of there. Yeah, the, the hard, the black. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tell us about it, eh? Uh, you know, they, they got, you know, they had that, you know, was that one guy uh, that was a famous murder? Um, what was his name? You know the crazy kid that that burned down the churches. What was his name? Um, yeah, yeah, I know it, was, it was all over the newspapers in Norway. Yeah, yeah, he's out. He's out. He's 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 uh, I don't know. He he's I, from last I heard from uh, you know he's not doing he's not in the music industry anymore. He's just uh, you know playing and you know living in his home. But what, wasn't Doom from Norway? No, it was um, what was the man's name? God. Well, forget about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nobody <laughs> normally except uh, the guys in jail and shit. Yeah. So, yeah. Let's, well, the, let's prob the, the problem. The problem is, is that America in general, that we militarize our police force, and that should not be allowed. I, I, you know, I'm a firm believer that our police are here to protect, not to harm us, and it's the total opposite. They are quick to harm the American citizens and put us in fear rather than supporting us and trying to help us, period. Typical Gestapo tactics. Yeah. You know, going back to Raymond's question, um, do we, do, do we, what do we think of the United States? You know, to, quite honestly, I believe the United States is not a threat to this country or that country, but the entire world. The entire civilized world. Well, it's also yeah. it's also a threat to its own citizens, you know, like you know where you know left and right people are going to jail for for nothing, nothing at and all. Well, there's, there's a whole other there's a whole other thing right there, the private prison industry, you know. Oh yeah, fifty percent uh, of the prison industry is uh, for profit. Yeah. Yes. That was, you know, that yes, was and, but doing. but we are the land cool. of the free, correct? We have we have more people. We have more people in incarceration than any other country in the world. What's your prison population? Wow. Well, okay. can, do you mind if I answer? Mm -hmm. Yes, please. It is seven times more than any on the other country in the world. 
And why? And let me answer that too. Because you fucking put people in prison for weed. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. I, heard, I heard in Norway, mm. you guys are big on that. And I've talked about this before. Your jails are starting to, um, they don't know what to do with the, with the facilities that they have because the prison population is, is dying. And when people go to, go to prison in uh, Norway, um, they get heavy psychotherapy and uh, they learn, they, they actually teach them skills so that when they get out of um, jail or prison, that they learn that they are able to reintegrate into society. And they're also medicated and they have psychiatrists and doctors so it's almost as though you're getting rehabilitated while you're uh, while you're incarcerated. Am I am I wrong? No, you're absolutely right. Uh, in Norway, prison is mm -hmm. not punishment. Prison is rehabilitation. Because uh, if I may ask you, gentlemen and gentlewoman, uh, does does it feel really good to punish people? And then make sure that they get fucked in the ass so when they come out, they keep rubbing people on the street. The answer is, of course, no. So right. we have education. It what is what it's about. Oh, my God. I'm having trouble with my English here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, so it's all about rehabilitation. Because if you think about society, if prison is for society... You teach people a skill, and then you let them come out, re rehabilitated, give them a place to live, uh, and they play skill, and then they start working, and then they stop fucking doing heroin or whatever. I mean, it makes sense, but of course, it's it's social democratic, so it's Russia, so fuck it. Oh, did somebody just hurt themselves? Oh no! I was shut my garage. I apologize. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, as far as rehabilitation here in America, it doesn't. It it, it, uh, it exists, but it really doesn't. They say they have no, programs, it really doesn't. but you have to meet the X, Y, and Z. Um, you know, uh, you know, there was a major. Uh, uh, holy shit! <laughs> um, yeah, there was a major company out here that got the contract for the rehabilitation of drug addicts in the prison system called Westcare. They got a grade D. Um, honestly, I can tell you one thing, you know, from being in, in incarceration that you don't learn shit. Um, uh, you, you might as, you know, I, I can tell you that they, they're not really, the, the services are there, but they are so fucking packed and nobody gives a shit that you don't get the help. It, it, it's, it's like if you're fucking sick, um, mm -hmm. you could be sick in a cell for like two weeks before you get the help. Well, well, somebody was, somebody was telling me too that, uh. That they don't even offer education in a lot of the prisons anymore. Oh, which... they do, they do. But you, but to get into the classes because of how many people are actually in there is really fucking hard. And then you got to meet X, Y, and Z. So if you're charged with this, you're not eligible. If you're too dangerous, mm -hmm. or you got this charge, you can't do this program. You know. Right. Right. Or you got to be so, in special so population. The... So Let's all so if, so, so, the, so if you're a convicted the felon, say if you if you're a convicted felon or or if um, you have an assault charge, which is basically even a misdemeanor here in America, you will not be eligible to go into the program. You will not be eligible GED. for. You will not be eligible for in certain states to use a drug and alcohol programs if you have a violent offense. Right. Yeah. And you work to pay in prison. You work for you know commissary. You know everything you get, you still have to work for. I mean, so. They're double dipping. They're getting, you know, they're getting money from the state to to fund these prisons, but the inmates are also doing work. Perfect example, and Rose will tell you this here in Maricopa when Arpaio was uh, in charge of places like the Tent City, the inmates worked. That guy should have been shot in the head. Absolutely. Yeah. And look where he's at now. Any anyway, I really do want to contribute to the conversation uh, because you know I run one of the campaigns called prison strike uh, but right now I'm getting tweets from everybody saying that uh, the screen went wrong so I have to give them a new screen uh oh right, let me let me test our feed Let's do that <clears throat> hmm. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, screen is, screen is working here. Um, I'm on two different devices, so it's working. My wife said that she lost the stream as well. Really? Am I being censored? No, 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 no. <laughs> it's fucking cool. Uh, I shared the new. <laughs> I shared the new stream, so we can just keep on talking. Uh, we're talking about private prisons or slavery in prisons or or what? <laughs> Pretty much. Well, I think it's all the same, really. Modern day slavery. Um, but as far as the prison population here, they were talking about how they wanted to stop with us making uh, or manufacturing clothing or, you know, and, and making... What's the you know, I, I, I know what you're getting at. Right. Uh, did you know, did you know that uh, already during the first uh, refugee ban of Trump, uh, people got put to work or pressured to work uh, already then, and three days after the refugee ban uh, of I'm Trump, for this. Um, yes, they got pressured. You work, slavery well, no, work, or yeah, no we, fuck you, money you, at all. So while they were while they were in uh, in the Aaron, immigration holding, they, they, were making them, they were making those people work. Yes, detention centers. That's the right word, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So the ICE detention centers, they were already put okay, to but... work uh, during the first one, and now three days after the second one, they're already being pressured to work. I'm getting messages from people uh, from all over the U.S. telling me that they're, you know, being put to work for no money at all. That is, that's, that's utter bullshit. Yeah. That's and bullshit. It was, yeah. was it, did, I, I think I heard something about, uh, like, ICE teams, uh, like, roaming the streets oh, yep. after the first implementation, yep. like, rounding people up in, by mass. In like, droves. How did, they, how did they even know where these people were? Um, well, ICE team, um, you know, for years has, uh, they know where they, they know where all the places are, where they surround up the people. They just haven't been enforcing them. And of course you give them a new executive order and then they start rounding them all up. Too big. And I need to get into my This, this calls into question, you know, the morals of, uh, of agents, uh, you know, um, government agents, police officers, you know, I mean, where, where these people that are. Are employed to enforce um, laws um, need to start showing some courage and, and and speaking up. I mean, I understand a lot of them might have families to feed and stuff, but you know. Are you talking about the ICE group, immigration raid? Yes, they've been, they've been going on. <laughs> yeah, they've been going on here in Arizona and on the West Coast too. Um, I admin the West Coast. I see a lot of it, um, mostly in rural. Pro poverty stricken communities what it is is they know um the areas to hit and target yes, um they, they have years. people that are yeah they already have checkpoints that they set up regularly um and again in strategic places during high traffic days friday saturday holiday weekends what they're doing right now is they have a list of people that either were supposed to report or needing to report to immigration and they're doing what's like an immigration roundup now we were told in the beginning here in phoenix that, um, for example, Guadalupe, she was a major activist here in Arizona, very involved in several major um, groups that helped with everything from um, helping immigrants to get jobs to um, the farming community. She was one of the first people targeted. So when the I um, when they came in and they started doing this, they already had their people picked. So it started off with a strategic pick of their roundup. Now it's just more sporadic. Now, uh, Raymond, I have a question for you when you when you brought this up um, about yes. people being forced into labor. Um, now, were some of these people just people that were traveling to the United States that had already been in transit and and just, you know, because of, you know, said executive order, uh, they just were stopped and just held? Were they were they also being forced into, into labor or were they just being held and deported? I, I, I'm not 100 no, percent no. sure. No, no, I have no direct information about that. Uh, my information comes from uh, people getting swooped up. 
yeah. uh, not people traveling or anything. And, and yeah. also my information comes from, uh, well, my knowledge comes from uh, being part of the, the campaign that's called uh, Prison Strike that started in late July last year. Uh, and that was long before uh, Trump, the Trump yeah, asshole. Yeah, I, I was just curious myself <laughs> on Trump whether asshole. or not that... <laughs> You know, the thought crossed my mind, like maybe have these people, but yeah, I was just curious and just kind of wondering, but because that would have been, that would have taken the fucked upness of it to a whole other level. Um, you know what I mean? It's fucked up enough as it is, but you know, that, you know, the, to just snag people in transit, that just would have been, you know. Uh, that, again, that, that, would have been, that would that that would have been seriously fucked up. Uh, yeah. As, as if it wasn't fucked up enough yet. Uh, so there's something I want to talk to you about, and it's censorship. Um, in the Americas, uh, we talk about censorship as something bad. Uh, censorship is something that happens under Putin and Iran and, and China and shit. Uh, but what you have to realize is that uh, Trump's immigration ban and ICE rate hashtag ICE raids, um, it happened for four days without any mainstream media channel reporting it. Mm -hmm. Four days until we saw what was happening, heard from every little part of America mm -hmm. that ICE was, was actually picking up people. Four days it took. And when we started tweeting about it, you know, anons and, and you know, things like, like that, uh, nobody had ever heard about it. When we started running it, running it hard, we couldn't get hurt. We couldn't hear nothing. Uh, even even your Anna News, which has 1.7 million followers, uh, we tweeted about the ice raids, and nobody liked it. Nobody shared it. We didn't understand why. Because it was fucking censored. So my thinking is, my theory is that Trump said, let's get all these fuckers off the street and send them home. But let's also make sure that no mainstream media talks about it. And let's censor the shit out of everybody on Facebook and Twitter and everything. So what do you guys think about that? You think I'm wrong or paranoid? Um, or no, you're not, you're not paranoid. Right. Um, there is we, we you know we've seen it for a long time you know facebook censorship and so definitely social media censorship um you know even to the levels of trying to even get the mainstream media to listen to anything they won't they won't they won't list they they won't listen to a story unless you make it look like a catastrophe um but you know I, oh, some, what do you think rose I think that um, as far as the media, there's a lot of censorship. Um, I seen over the first two weeks of the um, ICE raids when Trump became president, um, I have a pretty good network of other street activists, very similar to myself across the United States. And when the word got out that there were going to start ICE raids, I've seen a lot of people asking, has anybody heard anything? And that was, again, because of the media silenced. Um, as far as local news, um, be only because about 100 people went to the ICE building when Guadalupe was taken, the first person, and actually blocked the bus, the um, deportation bus, from exiting the facility was the only reason we got any media attention. And that's because we had to actually go through um, the whole black block scenario of us completely lining up and not letting the buses through. Yeah, you got to um, cause a shit scene before they actually... Yeah, the out. media the <laughs> media here does, does not favor us in any way, and we don't expect it to, and that's why we go back to um, word of mouth and our own media, using social media. Well, you're, and you're, you're, that's you're still censored about, as well, I mean... You're talking about the roots of anonymous and anti-censorship and using a collective... Uh, a collective group of people to, uh, you know, share, uh, gather, and, and put information out there. And why, yes. you know, yep. groups uh, have become, you know, groups like Anonymous or whatever faction, you know, that may be related in some way, shape, or form, you know, have become so important, um, you know, although... I, we went I, back to basics. So, we went back to, like, White... For example, White Rose. Um, we started... 
the Rose Underground um, in att an attempt to um, educate people more about the fascism that we're going to be facing with Trump. And I think that that network has proven very, very useful because we were able to make um, the communication with other people that are in other activism groups to prepare us for what we're expecting. And I think that it's been really helpful as far as sh information sharing. That's why I asked Rose in particular, because, you know, I see shit going on, so I asked Rose. Because going back to what we used to do uh, in the old days is the only way to do this. Because yes. now we're fucking fucked. I'm, I'm sorry about the words, but mm -hmm. that's just well, you're fun. No, no, you're correct. Right. No censorship here. No censorship. No censorship. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I'm gonna get slammed. no, and I, I see a lot of something, but but it's, that that'll be on me. I don't give a shit about my account. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of censorship. I mean, basically, the censorship that we see is. Um, the reach on our posts. I mean, me from a marketing background, I'm more of looking at numbers. Um, I love doing what we're doing, um, the activism, the radio show, but I my brain only looks at numbers, and. I see when we do certain shows or um, on certain topics, like when we were going over Dapple, I watch as a whole hundreds and hundreds of groups not getting the reach that they should. And that's the kind of censorship that I see the most. And people say, you know, if there's a um, dying child in a post from Syria or Palestine, everybody just looks away. But this is, this is the kind of situation now, whether it's people not looking or whether it's actual censorship from Facebook, we don't know. Well, well this, this is why I uh, asked Rose. Uh, myself, I run 128 groups and uh, pages. Nice. <laughs> so I know exactly. I know exactly what you're talking about, and I know exactly what mm -hmm. happened. Uh, do you guys mind if I tell you a story about the first day of the sure. ice raids? Go ahead. That was uh, that was the fifth day of the ice raids. It was uh, completely silent for four days. <laughs> then on the fifth day, that was Friday, uh, the uh, Friday after some long, long refugee ban, which was not a ban, which was a ban, but not a ban, right? Uh, then I started sharing ice rates and uh, started sharing uh, things that, uh, you know, reports from all over the U.S., people getting picked up and shit. Then I got something from, uh, from Florida. I'm a good fr friend in Florida, an anon. And uh, I shared that, uh, and I also shared uh, the, the phone number uh, to ACLU uh, so they could get a translator to that woman that was separated from her husband with her child and couldn't speak English. Uh, and I shared that on Twitter. Uh, it got shared to, I don't know, a couple of million people. And after 30 shares, because everybody loved it, but after 30 shares, it was completely motherfucking quiet. Nothing happened. It stopped. Just choked. There was nothing happening. Well, you know, as, um, as we, did, we, we did get some internal workings on the censorship that Facebook has from uh, that North Korean hack when they had Facebook uh, temporarily set up there. Uh, remember that kid that hacked into that, that Kim Jong-il thing? And yeah. then they actually found out that, that Facebook can censor stuff by region. Did you ever hear about that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 100%. So, this uh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I, I was going to say this kind of touches on uh, uh, something uh, – you know, something that you were talking about earlier, um, you know, about, uh, uh, sorry, I kind of lost my train of thought there. Um, it, it, censorship, censorship kind of comes down on, on, on all levels, but, um, you know, it, it taught, like when you were talking earlier about, mm -hmm. uh, about, uh, you know, trusting, uh, anyway, I forget what I was saying. <laughs> sorry. Never mind, Taylor. Taylor. So, uh, should we change subject? Can we talk about Lori Love for a while? Yes, yes I want to hear. Oh. Yeah, it's a, it's a good transition thing because that's also about censorship. Uh, I've been working uh, to 
you know, highlight Lori Love's, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know, case for since April last year. So that is 11 months or something. Um, just a few days ago, he was suspended. Uh, then everybody got really, really mad. Uh, he got mad too. So he started playing with, with Twitter support. And when all was said and done, like yesterday, we got perma ban, the, the most anti-fascist guy, the most Antifa guy in the world got perma banned from Twitter. And, and, and you really need to think about this. Milo Yuanomana Popolis, or whatever the fuck the asshole is called, uh, took two years, took two years to fucking ban. Your Lori Love was about to be extradited to the US for hacking the fucking US after they killed Aaron Swartz, got permabanned after two days. So what do you think that, friends and girls? <clears throat> well, I, sorry, sorry. That, I, that, I, that, I, that, that, that enrages me. It, it, it actually enrages me. Um, you know, it's not to say uh, that, that, first of all, I mean, uh, I, I, I believe from, from what I've read uh, that he is more than willing to stand trial for the charges brought against him, um, the, alleged, the alleged hacks um, that, that he committed. Um, but he would, like to, he would like to stand trial in his own country, which to me seems only reasonable that you're tried under the laws in your own country. If you break a law in your country and it's against that country's law, then you should, and, and you have similar statutes there because uh, they are somewhat similar, then he should be allowed to stand trial in his own country. As, as, a, as a, a UK citizen, there is no way that they should allow him to be extradited, deported, and taken to another country to stand trial where, you know, the penalties are much, much harsher and the environment is much, much harsher, you know, when they already have their own views and laws against that, you know, that that's just appalling to, to think that he can, that the, the UK government is willing to just say, fuck it. Yeah, sure. Here you go. Have them. That's bullshit. It, it is absolutely. You know, it, it, it's really sad. You know, we're all supposed to abide by the so-called laws of the land. But yet these laws are created by people who make up laws as they go along. And their arms are extending beyond their own borders. Absolutely. That, that's what bothers me the most. I think that bothers me, too, is the laws that they have are completely ridiculous and ludicrous. I mean, I've mentioned this before. The things that they have that are illegal still in the United States compared to, the, like, you can't smoke a plant, but in 20 states you can have sex with an animal. What is the problem here? Why is this not getting through the, their, head, their head that this is an issue? You're putting somebody in jail for 30 years for maybe an ounce of marijuana. And this guy's hurting a dog. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this is horrible. You know, and I hate to yeah. say it like that, but it's really the stupid laws. Well, the thing is, and, and, and Rose, you, you know me. You know me well enough. You know where I stand when it comes to hacking. But, uh, you know, you know my viewpoints on that. Um, I you know, do. I, I, believe, I believe that all knowledge should be open source. Um, but that's not to say that I ever think or even think that it should that hacking should be legalized because there's too many people with malicious intent. Um, when you decide to make a choice to, uh, you know, to stand up for something and, and search out information or whatever, you know that you're taking a risk. You, you know that you're taking a risk. I'm not saying that it should be legalized, but, you know, uh, and this is a, a common uh, a common thing amongst people that I, I communicate with. But, you know, the crime, the, the punishment doesn't fit the crime. Oh, for hacking? Is what for it hacking, is. no, it doesn't. You know, you do one DDoS account, you do you DDoS and you get caught. It's minimum five years. <clears throat> All the kid yeah, did was press a button. Do you mind if I jump in? Yeah. Uh, here's yes. the thing. Uh, Lori Love, his uh, advocates, uh, his lawyers, oh, for hacking? Um, for hacking. anybody no, who has ever listened to him does not say that he shouldn't 
face uh, the penalty for allegedly hacking anything. All that they say, all that he says, all that I say, is that he should be able to face it in his own country, where the laws will, would give him, I don't know, three months to three years. In the U.S., he faces 99 fucking years in three different jurisdictions. You're for getting this, right? For accessing information. Yes, exactly. You know, and that goes back. I heard somebody say something about pressing a button and DDoSing, although I don't think consider DDoSing. Oh, well, it's not um, a real hack, hacking, but, 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 hacking, but the law, the but law still treats it's it. It's even, even more so. Like you said, I mean, DDoSing, you're basically bringing a server down for a temporary amount of time um, and very seldomly with any long-term damages other than maybe some financial repercussions for the company that was targeted, which was probably targeted for a good reason in a lot of cases. Um, but, you know, you look, like you said, look at the penalties that people get simply for, for uh, does I consider DDoS more of a form of protest? Yeah, it's an than online protest. Germany, Germany legalized it. They, I, I, well, I, I, they legalized it? Yeah. I, I could see them decriminalizing it, maybe, but maybe not legalizing it. But I don't know. I, that's the first I heard of that. But, that's you know. an American word, legalizing shit. That's, that's, not, <laughs> even I'm sorry, that's not even a thing. <laughs> Either it's legal or it's not. So, so oh, oh shit! Yeah, I see. yeah it, it, it's either legal to the local governments or the federal government denies it. And there's so many who have to jump through. I I don't know. I I just live with the philosophy. I do what I want. I mean, as long as I'm not harming anybody else, then nobody should be able to say what I can and can't do as an adult. My mother uh, taught me at a young age that there's a difference between morally right and legally right. And as long as you're on the good correct. side of morally right, then that's that's the important thing. And that people Absolutely. will forgive you and and see you in, in whatever, in your moral light, more so than your, your legal standing. Anyway, I love Rose a lot and Tyler. Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. We really appreciate you coming on. Um, you're more than welcome to come back anytime you want to. Thank you, love. Thank you very much. Sorry, my son's trying to troll us in the background. Uh, anybody mind if I just, you know, tune into the background and say good night? Yeah. No problem. Please, go ahead. Okay, thank you. You cannot Much, much, much. Later. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening or, or day if it's day there. <laughs> it's morning. It's morning, honey. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. What an amazing man. <laughs> yeah. Th thanks a lot, guys, for inviting me on here. Uh, I'm glad that I, I was able to get on and, and have a conversation with, uh, with some enlightened individuals, um, including Raymond. Um, you know, I who, always enjoy talking to you. Yes, always. We've, we've talked on the phone many times. Uh, I think this is the first time we've been <laughs> live to any amount of people, but I, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Um, I'm usually a regular on And Daniel's thank you for show. coming on short notice. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, thank you I was for coming actually, on short notice. I was in the middle of making a, a tutorial video for uh, any aspiring uh, uh, internet have, security enthusiasts. Today, um, but I the video is encoding right now, and it's taking hours and hours. So oh, you got a big yeah. file. I had some free time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah jay's pretty awesome i mean I, he's one of my go-to people as far as like understanding a lot of stuff that's going on and we've had on past shows talks about um the new bloods versus the old fags um there has been a lot of old fags that have open arms and learning as we go is really important that's why the first half of the show i didn't really say anything and that was because mm -hmm. there's a point in time where you have to stop talking and listen you know what i mean can I interject something on the new blood old old fag thing? Um, I, I personally do not have any problems with with new blood for just being new blood. That is not an issue by any means. I think the problem that a lot of old fags have um, is that uh, you know one of the things we touched on tonight was censorship, um, and I know how a lot of people here feel about people like uh, Sammy Warren or guys from the Hate Factory, but. Uh, yeah. You know, they're, they're entitled to be the assholes they are. Um, if you want to stand for, for anti-censorship, then, you know, 
they they have the right to be those assholes. That doesn't mean that you know there aren't repercussions for being dicks, but a lot of a lot of old fags are really anti anti censorship of any type um, whatsoever. And I think the big thing is the amount of slacktivists I call them out there with uh, with, the, with the mask profiles. Um, I don't think that anybody I've talked to on this show tonight would fall into that category. Everyone here seems educated, um, and yeah. I know. For I sure. think this is is that Mark of, that, that's on here yes. as well. Yes. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, we know each other from from quite a while back. Yeah, you you closed <laughs> your one account, and um, I don't think you've added me back. <laughs> No, well, <laughs> I, I was just kind of waiting for other people to add me back. <laughs> you know, me and, I was, Rose, me and Rose living in the same state, actually same city. You know, we talk a lot, and your names come up, and we have nothing but love and respect for you, Jay. I oh, literally, thanks, I man. literally was at your house like four hours ago. Just saying. I was asleep. <laughs> well, well, Mark, me and you have had lots of communication in the past, so I know what you're about. I know, I know what you do, and uh, My zero you know, I respect it. Policy is well, in that. Uh, I'll, I'll definitely have to add you up on here. I haven't added too many people to this account. I just kind of wait for people to add me and uh, and just kind of go from there. I, I'm only at 100 friends right now on my current account, which I've had for quite a while. So, Although I did just reactivate my old account. I had a 90-day ban. I made this epic picture of uh, Hillary Clinton fucking <laughs> Donald Trump in the ass. And I posted, yeah! it. I, I posted it everywhere, and I got, I got myself 90 days for that. So I kind of just migrated well over it. to this well account. Worth it. It, was, well it, was, it was definitely well worth it. But, you know, I think the biggest problem with a lot of old fags towards the new fags is uh, a lot of the slacktivism. It's hard to know who's... Who's real if you haven't had a lot of inter interactions with them or not? Because the amount of people that uh, are out for for personal gain or just you know I mean don't embody what the 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 essence of anonymous once was. I think that there's a lot of that, and I think uh, you know I mean. And I think that uh, me and Mark have talked about that too. You got the keyboard warriors or the people that 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 hit interested on an event and don't show up. And for us, it's not just about the internet. Um, it's also about the street. You know if. It, it's not even about wearing the mask, it's the idea, you know what I mean? And if people aren't going to embrace the idea, the, the no censorship, all these other things that are involved with Anonymous, then how, how are you going to tell the difference? It takes years to know who's real and who's not anymore. Well, that's just it. And one of the things, I mean, Raymond was talking about Lori Love and the amount of time that he's facing. There are a lot of people that uh, flew under the, the banner Anonymous and represented them, like represented with that and uh, like with a lot of heart that have made a lot of sacrifices. Some of them have gone to jail for a lot of time yeah. and others that have just put themselves out there and taken the risk of going to jail. And, you know, when you see a whole bunch of people that weren't around when that happened and you feel like maybe they don't understand where your roots came from, you tend to get <sighs> a little bit spiteful towards that sometimes. And I think that's where a, a lot of the division between the old and the new comes. But I think that a lot of the old fags are willing to teach the new bloods that are willing to learn. True. Well, I don't know. I, we, we spoke about this, I believe, the other night on the show. and uh, oh, When I was trying to explain how VPN works, I was too technical. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. that, that was the day. You know? you know, my philosophy is very simple. I embrace everyone. You know, we all get the can you teach me to hack chat message? And you know, and that's, that's one thing we just ignore it. But right. if somebody comes to you and wants to learn, what can I do to, you know, step up and, and, you know, make the world better and, and lend my voice to the cause and, and the beliefs that we have. And, and going back to the censorship thing, I'm very anti-censorship, but I'm also, you know, I'm also there to help anybody that wants to be helped, whether they be old, new, just started five minutes ago and don't understand. It doesn't <clears> matter to me. But it, it, what really bothers me is the people who come in and and use the mask to as a dating site and an ego thing. Facebook is no place to really do an op. We all we've had discussed this in previous. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. No, that's, that's the wrong place. I, I always to, to go to jail. To do it. I encourage anybody. Uh, you know, if you look at my profile, I don't actually have any anonymous pictures on there, um, and I don't like to even you know, discuss my involvements, uh, for reasons. Uh, but you know, I mean, but I, I, I've anybody, I, I mean, I actually did get my start, uh, out on Facebook mm -hmm. years and years ago, 
that is where I met the the first group of anons that I dealt with. Um, fortunately, they were uh, they were good enough to enlighten me and bring me and show me other places that exist on the internet outside of Facebook, um, where a lot of real conversation happens and a lot of things behind the scenes happen. And uh, you know, I I don't personally feel that anonymous is necessarily a good sp or I mean Facebook is a good spot for anonymous. Uh, to, to exist as any type of hive um, or collective. I, I mean, it's it's one thing to to uh, be you know proud of what you do, but like I said, I don't even promote myself as such um, in a lot of ways. Not because I'm not anonymous. I just prefer to be anonymous anonymously. That's, uh, right. that's just my personal that's view, the key, though. Right I mean, I, it, it's not up to me to tell other people what to do. But then there's also the whole creed thing. Where it says anybody can be anonymous, but people mis misinterpret what anybody can be anonymous means. It means oh, through no, your no. actions, not through saying you're anonymous. Saying you're anonymous does not make you anonymous. No. Well, Same, or, putting or, a mask on your profile. Mask. Yeah, that doesn't make you anonymous. Making no. being anonymous is about following through actions, whether you are a uh, uh, habitual information share sharing leaks, um, you know, I mean, and, and there's a lot of people that get their start sharing out, but, you know, go search out places where there's information that you don't see repeated 10,000 times on Facebook. You know, you there's, know start a, looking. there's a quote that's been around for a long time, and, and, I, and I take things rather personally when it comes to anonymous, anonymous because I love anonymous. I, I love what it stands for. I love the idea. And that quote is, to be anonymous comes from the heart, and I truly believe that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because if your heart's in it, then your your actions will follow. Your actions will follow. Whether your boots on the ground, mind you, I still firmly believe that, in my view, that Anonymous is a hacker collective. Um, you know, I mean, that's I, I encourage anybody that says they're Anonymous to go out and learn as much as you can. I'm not saying become an elite hacker. Sing I'm not saying go you, out and... At least you learn the basics, you know. I like to tell yeah. people seek knowledge, whether it's about internet security, wink, wink, or yeah. philosophy, or <laughs> learn about your, learn about the government, the so-called government. Learn about other countries. Learn as much as you can about yes. everything. Educate yourself, because yes. education I, education is not a degree, a piece of paper from a college. Nothing beats self-education. Absolutely. Yes, that's 100%, 100% correct. Uh, yeah, I, can tell you, you know, I can tell you from experience, you know, I went to, I went to a school, you know, for an IT degree. And, uh, you know, I spent, uh, I was a Van Wilder. I was there for like four years for a two-year degree. And I walked, out of the, I, walked, <laughs> I walked out of the college, you know, with an associate's degree in uh, information technology. And um, uh, I can tell you one thing. I was completely unprepared to work in the workplace. Everything else I had to learn from YouTube videos. <laughs> Well, yeah, you wouldn't believe how many people I know that have, have taken, like, uh, you know, I mean, di have different degrees of programming and stuff like that, and not to, like, toot my own horn by any means, but quite often they come to me and ask me questions, you know, and there might be better programmers, you know, in a specific area, you know, a specific language, but, you know, I, I took an interest in it on my own time. I was never forced into, you know, just one, one particular thing, and and I kind of just grew from there. And but I, I, the only reason I think I even learned is because I had a genuine interest in, not because I was like, oh, I enrolled in this two thousand dollar course, and now I've got to finish it. That's one of and, the things that I tell people: learn to code. I mean, you can go online and learn for free. <laughs> learn to yep. code. Isn't there? Uh, I just I referred a kid the other day. You know, he wanted to learn some basic, you know, programming language. So I told him, I just referred him to learn Python.org. You know, it's Absolutely. all out there. It's all out there. Even the programming languages, they have free sites. Well, not all of them, but some of them have free places that you can go. I would say start with VB. Visual Basic. C, yeah. Yeah, and then and Python. Python is Python's an easy language. That was actually the first one I ever looked into because. It's based off of English. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this the syntax relates very, very closely to English. <laughs> Code Academy you know. is perfect for that. I mean, you know, that's where I send a lot of people is Code Academy. I used to as well. And that's actually where I where I learned Python. 
but when I went back to do Java JavaScript later, the, it had changed, and now they want you to pay. Uh huh. To get the full courses, with like the tutorial videos and stuff like that, and the help, you actually have to pay them now. So that was kind of a bummer. But you know, I mean, I definitely encourage you know if if you're gonna fly under a banner, understand where its roots are, and and have you know, at least some interest and respect for that. I mean, there's nothing wrong with just being an activist without being anonymous. You did, know? Any, did any of you guys ever learn that stupid language action script and then found out that it was, like, completely, like, obsolete a few years after? <laughs> I kind of gave it that side <laughs> when I first saw it. I was like, it, it's like the drone theory we were talking about, Tyler. It's kind of like, uh, straight up you know, okay. I know, like, my, my, my professor, she's like, she's like, how come none of your shit works? And I'm like, I've completely blitzed out of my mind going to class. Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, there, there's definitely kind of a feud that's been brewing, and it's not a new thing. The old blood, new blood thing has been around forever. I remember being a new blood and, you know, getting, you know, in, intimidated, maybe not intimidated, but, you know, talked to in a certain way by some of the old bloods when I first started and that was a long time ago and that that existed then and it was because I wasn't around for their beginning and they didn't know me they didn't know how to trust me some of them I'm very good friends with now some of them I don't know where the fuck they're at but you know I mean the, the people when the dust settles when everything when everything's said and done and the dust settles the people that are true to what they're doing will still be there doing what they're doing right you had the money to buy a nine Hold on, I think George wants to hop on. This is George Lennox? Yeah. Hold on. Oh, you know, George always loves to hit the topic of uh, of this right here. Yeah, let me get him. Hold on. <laughs> well, me and George have talked many times on air about this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we we've agreed and we've disagreed several times, I'm sure. But he's always a respectful individual. And see, you, you nailed it right on the head right there, Jay. We disagreed, but we're you know, we're good people. And right. a, a lot of that's one of the things that you know that tends to be a uh, a conflict between people who are just starting out. They they come in and they they're they're not quite sure yet and they feel like you're coming down on them if you disagree with them or something, when all you're really trying to do is guide them in the right direction. And I think if more people would realize that, we wouldn't have such a, a butting of heads. Well, it's also the upbringing, you know. That has a the, lot to do the, with it as well, yes. The the older guys, you know, we we had to put up with a lot more than what they're dealing with now, you know. And it's like, you know, you guys couldn't even handle half of what we went through growing up compared to now you know everybody wants we didn't, a we didn't have the internet when i grew up <laughs> same here right. yeah me neither. You know, i had dial up so... i had dial up back in the day you know when it was a uh compu serve and all that and we used to play um doom and, and my mom would always be pissed off she'd be like i can't fucking call out here's this over the I was, phone I was, I was already i was already too busy skateboarding and getting high when that came out. <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> Remember, when, yeah, remember yeah. when it was just AOL and it wasn't actually, like, integrated into, like, the World Wide Web? You You've got that? mail. Yeah, you've got mail. <laughs> yeah. I hate it. That. that haunts right. me. Or you used to be able to dial up, um, used to be able to dial up, um, you know, uh, company servers like Konami and stuff. And uh -huh, they had their own game. little stuff. Yeah, they had their own little programs that were, like, exclusive if you found the server. <laughs> I remember a game called Battlefield. Does anybody remember that yeah. game, Battlefield? Yeah. Are we talking yeah. about the board game? <laughs> no, no, no. This was a game. You dialed, up, you dialed up the server and you could play it. At, uh, God, I forgot what. I think it was. Um, I, I want to say early nineties. Red, Red Alert was similar too, wasn't it? Red Alert, exactly. That yeah. was another one. Oh, I thought you were talking about that weird exclusive game that was like on AOL. It was like World War Two, and you had this like plane, but like you were you were just hitting that like. Maybe twenty eight AK or twenty eight KBPS, so that everything was. <laughs> no, but I remember. I remember that game now. An ICQ. 
<laughs> I can just imagine some of the younger viewers, you know, like really lost right now. Oh yeah, remember back in the movie, they still got a port. They still got a port <laughs> named for uh, ID software, port six six six. Remember, it was integrated to Windows three point one when they uh, went off of the DOS. And uh, remember that it's still there. Right before, right before Windows ninety five, wasn't it? It's still there, port six six six. It's still registered to ID software. Huh. Really? Yeah. <laughs> you have to check that out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, how much do you think they paid for port 666 for Doom? <laughs> <laughs> Doom was fucking legend back in the day, but fuck, man, that shit would get glitching on you. You couldn't tell whether you were going forward or up or down or backwards. Yeah. Or what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I honestly didn't really get into, like, uh, computers until a few years ago. I actually, when I was younger, I was too busy doing fucking other shit. Like I said, I grew up without the Internet, so I didn't really care about the Internet even when it did come along. Um, you know, I mean, I, I had a neighbor that had Internet. He was the only one I knew. His uh, his dad was a lawyer. They're the, they're the richest people in the neighborhood. And they had the, uh, they had the AOL disc and... I remember going on there and we could only go on for so long because otherwise their, their phone bill would be about five, $600 a month. I was too young to remember. I think my parents were just always pissed off at me because I was always on. I don't remember paying yeah. the bills. <laughs> I, I, I was just more content with my skateboard and a fucking joint hanging out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah, I think I was fortunate in that aspect because I had family that, you know, worked for the, for the, you know, the government and military. And I, I, I was allowed into places that, a child probably technically should have gone, not been able to go into where, you know, room, uh, computers, the size of a room, you know, that were super cool. And, you know, I, I remember those days where my uncle would take me to work with him. And, um, I, I guess I was fortunate to be able to see that stuff. You know, didn't they have a uh, punch cards before they even uh, came up with the, yeah, with, they with, sure, uh, yes. with tape reels, yeah. Yeah. and then they had like the reel to reels and, you know, it was, it, it was a really yeah. awesome time. And, and, I think I've been a part of the computer field uh, further back than I can remember. And um, yeah. I've learned a lot over the years. That's where I got my first yeah. uh, formal training in computers was from him. And he was, he, you know, he worked for the government doing, uh, writing that, writing the, some of the stuff that they probably still use today. I shot a person from the top of the room. I was lucky enough. I had a buddy. I, I didn't appreciate it then, but I had a buddy who was into phone Phone freaking and stuff. Oh, oh, twenty six hundred. The magazine fracking. Freaky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Frack, was, yeah, frack you, magazine. You, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they, it was freak. It was frack freak, and then it was twenty six hundred. Uh, twenty six hundred was the twenty six hundred megahertz was the tone that you needed to get the phone. Um, yeah, I believe that the old phone system was based on a Debian, Debian based, and it was all auditory tones that that gave you. No, I could yeah, couldn't they, have been Debian based because Debian's only been around since the the late '90s, early 2000s. Okay, that's when uh, Ian, Ian Murdoch was the founder of that, who passed away. But there's there was a, a I was actually like doing some follow up on that. Somebody sent me a video on on like so these freaking guys. Um, they they used to have like these secret call clubs where like they would they buried somewhere in the system where they would just like tap in. They would people would call each other all over the world for, for like free phone bridges. Hello? Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they definitely did. Yeah, I, I remember my buddy, and he, he showed me how to make free phone calls from any payphone just by tapping the, the, uh, the, the little hang up button. Over, I used to do that all the time. The right remember, remember the old loop, the old loop button? It was three three zero in the last four digits of your phone number, and then the phone companies took that away because, like, if you have like the wrong kind of setup, <laughs> it would send your phone, your phone into an infinite loop. So every time you would put down the phone it would start ringing again it would ring yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i did that to I, my I buddy's my buddy's house and they got my, my friend's parents were calling my dad and they're like what did you do to their house their phone will not stop ringing and i'm just like i don't know i, don't. <laughs> I did it at my own house <laughs> oh my god so i yeah i had a um, speaking of freaking I, I i knew this one guy he was like this one of my sponsors yeah, he was into um not he was more into the criminal aspect of it, but uh, uh, you know he uh, he uh, he went to federal prison for this. Um, he was into like his thing was um, breaking into the phone machines and stealing all the change, and he got caught. 
<laughs> we used to break into parking meters, but yeah, same. No, he told me. He told me that he told me he got caught because he had like ten thousand dollars worth of change, and um, um, I guess I guess like like there was already a case on him, and they found all these like quarters in his house and stuff and shit like that. <laughs> You look at you look at like back in the day the way that uh, even computers like I actually remember um, I don't know if I'm incriminating myself here but it's been a real long time but this was back in the 90s and there's a bank in Canada uh, that we found out what time their machines reset and oh usually, it was five it was five oh five in the morning and we went and I got my own card once there. And I and I skimmed my card, so you could go with no money and no overdraft. And between 5:05 and 5:35 a.m., you could take out whatever your daily limit was. And so then we went out, and then we went downtown. And I hate to say this, but we pretty much exploited the homeless people down there. Um, but we would pay them to go get a bank card in their name and then sell it to us. And we would do this, and these cards would go like three or four months before they would shut them down going negatives into like the tens of thousands of dollars. Like if your daily limit on your card was a thousand dollars withdrawal, but you had zero money in the bank, we could go there every single night, Monday to Friday and withdraw the daily limit. And we were buying cards off. Of, I remember having like 10 cards at a time, like take man. I was living in the Radisson. I was like 18 years old. And I lived in a penthouse on the Radisson suites, <laughs> living it up. Like, you know, and it was just such a simple glitch and it took them forever to fucking so every to day you, every day you were pulling out like two thousand bucks <laughs> oh yeah dude i still i still have clothes i still have clothes that i bought then i still <laughs> own clothes that i bought then i had enough clothes i would go out and buy like a thousand dollars worth of clothes a day i was like i was living like a celebrity but you know that lasted that lasted for a few months until basically they caught on to it and then you could only do a card like once or twice and then it would it would shut the card off automatically. But, uh, yeah, fuck. I mean, we exploited that. I, it, when I think about it now, that was pretty much a hack back then. You know I mean? Like, they, the, the, the safeguards in, in networks and, and, and computers were extremely minimal. I wish I fucking had the interest then that I do now because, fuck, it would have been a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, is our feed down? Are we still live? Because I'm, I'm looking at it, and it's just... Um, it's not working. Well, it's because I got I got I'm gonna get hit with the piracy thing after this. <laughs> ah, I see. Your your job is done, sir. You can rest now. No, we're still alive. <laughs> yeah, we're still alive. Well, anyways, hey guys, I'm gonna let you guys go. I gotta get up in a few hours, go to work. But um, it was nice chatting. And uh, you guys take care. You too, man. I'm sorry All you right. have to work on Saturday. Yeah, no, yeah me, me too. too. Trust me. <laughs> it was good meeting you, man. Yeah, same here. All right. All right. So who, who we have left? It's just me, you, Rose. Where's Rose? Yeah, where is Rose? She's been pretty quiet, hey? Where are you? Smoking me. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Smoke. I, I, I don't I judge me. All y'all know me. All y'all know me. No, I'm just kidding. Fucking no. Humphrey over there. Share the wealth. Oh man, I'm fucking. Every time I put the phone on mute, James is sticking the pipe in my face. Like he's like, "Here, get hired." Maybe <laughs> it's because I don't bitch as much if I'm high. I don't know. Was that was that innuendo? I don't know. James, are, what kind of pipe are you sticking in her face, James? <laughs> oh. No, I don't even know if he's listening anymore. I think he's kind of like a. He, I don't think he's a butt hurt fag mode. But both of us on the show at the same time, he, I, I it's too much for me. Has he been, has he been him. fucking going through those books I gave him or what? Has he been working on that? Uh, don't ask me that <laughs> on the air. What the heck? Okay, give me a trouble. Yeah, but honestly, you, you, know, you, know, teaching, you know, teaching new bloods, at least the basic techniques is something that we should, we should at least be doing, you know? Yeah, I know a fag or two that deserves a medal for as much bullshit as they put up with. But... Well, no, no, no. I mean, I mean, I... I, I <laughs> Okay, so check this shit out, right? So I don't know, I don't, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just saying that, you know, you know, this there was like this underage kid that saying he was a non, and I was like, whatever. And he PM me and was and I me. would shelter them he, and put them in no, the new blood was, chat and take good no, care of them. No, he was PMing me and he's like, look what I did, look what I did, and he's DDoSing 
a video game website, and I'm just oh, like, Jesus. I'm, I was just like, uh, uh, I asked like a stupid <laughs> question. I said, you know, are you taking any precautions to, uh, you know, so Protect they don't know who you are? And he's like, what are you talking about? I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> that, that click. <laughs> yeah well see i'm not i'm not really familiar like if most people know me they know that i'm an activist i came into the techie part of it just researching just because everybody else is doing it and i wanted to see you know i can i can do most household wiring and that kind of stuff but with computers it's all i'm hands-on so learning by reading is good for some people, but I'm one of those people that actually have to be taught. You know what I mean? I want to see it, so then I learn it. I could read it and comprehend it, but I'm more of a a, a learning like somebody is sitting in front of me and doing it. So yeah, I don't want to blast people names have out different here, but abilities. We have, we have a good anon. You know, he goes by the screen name. You know, um, how should I say this? Uh, should I say it here? Is it okay? <laughs> Go for it. Um, you know, ZX Hacker. He. Uh, mm-hmm. He puts out instructional videos, you know, all the time. I, I, Jay I, started it, James. Wow. No, he's he, he's not, not talking shit. You're, you're, no, you're I, like the biggest liar. Man. Oh, you, I didn't say that you weren't reading the books, James. Oh, I did not see <laughs> fucking Jay. I mean, I mean, a lot well, of his stuff. Some of his stuff is advanced, and some of his stuff is is uh, pretty basic. But you know, um, you can kind of get a general sense of, uh, you know, it's just some of the well, basics. Can I, can I throw some things out there for anybody that's listening that does want to learn? Yeah. Um, download uh, download and install Metasploitable 3. Um, there's Metasploitable and Metasploitable 2, uh, which are built off of Linux systems, but they're all CLI. Uh, Metasploitable 3 is like a complete, it, it's built like a fucking company's web server. Um, actually, I just made a video. I'm just waiting for it to fucking encode right now on uh on exploiting it manually with it, it it's meant to exploit with metasploit um but i did it manually um you know found you know doing nmap scans uh found the the web dev uploaded shell onto there um they had like hidden network uh on there i'm, I'm up i'll have the video up here uh tonight or tomorrow um whenever i can get it encoded it's taken forever because it's pretty long, but like, you know, doing privilege escalations and adding users and then accessing like remote desktop and stuff. Um, so I, I did a couple, and I got a couple of SQL videos and stuff that I put out. Um, by all means, um, I'll share them around, but you know, I mean, it, if you want to, there, there's definitely people willing to teach. Um, it, it's hard to dedicate the time when you're trying to do your own thing yep. to, to be in like fully hands-on. Uh, for other people, but you know, if somebody's got a legitimate question, or like somebody like James that you know I talk to fairly often, and he's a, a good brother of mine, I, and uh, you know, I, I I will go out of my way to spend two hours on a phone call helping him set he up will. his shit. He will. <laughs> you know, you know, and and the thing is, like, we're in the middle of moving, so he wants to spend so much time. Like, I go back to work. I know, he's broken, man. Yeah, and his keyboard, my son, like, my son. Know, okay. Right he's now. like, he's like threatening to shoot no, you a picture of his tell keyboard. Him, tell him I'm, I'm just, I'm just fucking with him. I know. He's just I know fucking with you. you. We move in seven days too, babe. Don't worry. Oh, uh, don't worry. Somebody mentioned cy- Cybrary. That's another good resource as well. Cy- <laughs> Cyber. Okay, so yeah, Metasploitable three. There's another one called DVWA. It stands for Damn Vulnerable Web Application, and that's all about website hacking. X <laughs> XWVA, which is extremely vulnerable website. Or web application is another one. Then go to the OWASP website. They've got tons. Matilde. Um, these are all web applications that you can host on your own system that have built-in vulnerabilities, known vulnerabilities that you can exploit legally and teach yourself how to attain certain skills. Um, wasn't there a website? Know, one wasn't of the, there, isn't there a website out there? That, ha- that, hack the site. Ha- yeah, hack this site. Which was yeah. started by Jeremy Hammond. Yeah. You know? Yes. He, it was founded by Jeremy Hammond. Yeah, that site's still up, and that's a really good one. It's a little more advanced, um, you know, for for some people. Um, I would suggest that you 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 definitely need to learn how to understand JavaScript and HTML before you start exploiting that, because you actually have to pour through source code in order to be able to uh, to exploit some of the vulnerabilities. But they have a lot of stuff on there, and they they do have a forum with a lot of people. But if you ask the questions in the right way, are willing to help guide you. They will never give you the answer, but they will guide you 
in certain ways if you approach them in the right aspect, in the right way, in the right way, manner. To I guess that's one of the biggest things as a new fag I had to go through is so many videos of, oh, you want to learn this? Then here you research it. Then you research it. Then you research it. And that's that's one of the things, too, when you're um, on my end learning about computers is that if somebody doesn't want to learn, they have to be able to willing to research it. You know, And it started for me simple things like, torrents or streaming or learning how to factory reset and techie job well, shit to, but you have to start at the basics you definitely yep. do have to start at the basics but you know there comes yep. a point where you start to connect dots i mean that's at least what I yeah think. yeah when that's you know, how it even is for me you. you know there's certain things that i'm just like you know some of these kids are doing and i'm just like what the hell are you doing and i'm just like rose until the dots start okay. connecting i don't understand you know it becomes almost second nature after yeah. a while uh -huh. yeah and you know, you know, if, if I, you know, I read a lot of tutorials too. And you know, speaking of Metasploit, uh, I, I think it was last year, something like that. I, I wrote a tutorial on how to combine InMap and Metasploit. And Rose, I believe you're, you know, you're an admin in Freedom Fighters, so you have access to all those files. And I think nice. it's, if you're interested in it, I, I think I remember seeing you post those actually. Um, and and yeah, InMap is integrated into Metasploit now, so yes, it, it's definitely powerful. Um, you know, if you set up Metasploit properly, uh, you can save all of your configurations. You can have a certain database connected specifically to one area. If you do want to get into this reconnaissance, recon, um, start understanding. That's where I started doing NMAP scans um, and then researching when I would get results on those. A lot of times when I first started, I had no idea what the fuck half the shit was running on half the ports. So I started Googling them. Um, and if you run a version scan, that, that, that becomes extremely beneficial because, you know, not every mail server, not every FTP server is, uh, is vulnerable, but certain versions of like, you know, uh, the, uh, oddly enough, very secure FTP server is like one of the most vulnerable, you know, certain, certain versions of it. Um, you know, not everything you find is going to be worthwhile. Uh, yeah. So you, it, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time, and and it's a never-ending process. I mean, you're you're constantly, you know, updating your knowledge and and learning, you know, different techniques and every day. And you know, the two things that I would like to tell anybody coming into this: number one, there's not a magic button you can hit and automatically hack something. And number two, learn, and don't stop learning. You'll yeah. never stop yeah. learning. I mean, there's so much just not even in the computer world in life, you have to be willing to open up your mind and your heart to learning more and more every day. And every day is going to be something new or, and for me, like, oh, I'm not bugging you while you're studying James. And you wonder why he's not on the show at the same time. Um, okay. When you date someone who's not, a, um, well, is awake, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, but as you research stuff and learn and as you grow as an activist, there's different things that you want to know, you know. Like we we see as activists in a community of hackers, we see what what's done and what's said and it creates that interest only because online the two communities dwell. You know what I mean? So for me, there's a lot of people that are interested and in, not just in basic protecting of their Facebook, but I mean, if you have a friend that's on your fit friends list and their wall is completely like their families, they're sharing family stuff and it's like out of control, be a friend and message them. <laughs> Cause well, I've seen my, a lot of that the yeah. last few days. Like uh, my Facebook is mostly just pictures of me and my wife. Like, I mean, <clears throat> not to say, you know, that, but that's for me on Facebook. Cause I don't really, I'm not big on Facebook. I think on, on Facebook, Facebook, you know, I, I, when I had to resort that back to like a personal one and then I had changed it like I think like six or eight months before I decided to go back, I found myself deleting anything that I had linked my name or, or, or GPS hit. So I'm just like, fuck. It was like five years worth of fucking deleting. You know, I think for most of us, it can all be, it can be said that Facebook is for fun. Our personal business gets done and no one ever hears about it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, my Facebook, even my one that's not in my real name <clears throat> is mostly real shit. And it is, I don't have Fox attached to it. I don't have hacks or attached to it. You know what I mean? Because that just draws attention because I don't want that being, <clears throat> uh, 
I don't want that being what I what I project because or you find you might find he, yourself with the funny your account has been disabled. <laughs> well, well either that or just I find people are more eager to listen when you put a face and a name, you know, as opposed to, you know, a mask and a and an alias. Uh well, at least an alias that is obviously an alias. Um <laughs> you know, I mean yeah, like John Smith, awaken, not throwing him under the bus, just <laughs> just an example. See, and that, and that, if, that's what that's why I use my real name, my real identity, you know, because to me there's no point in hiding. I can be anonymous and and be an activist and do everything that I that I do and you know give a guy a bottle of water, whatever you want to call it, but I do it as who I am. Yeah, yeah, and I mean. You, you definitely, uh, Mark, I know you, you have a lot of uh, anonymous stuff on your, on your Facebook profile. And to me, that doesn't necessarily bother me either that people actually, you know, post that stuff because it's showing at least a, a level of support for, uh, for something. Um, but I highly doubt that you go on there and post incriminating evidence against yourself no. or, no, or anything like, before. you know, uh, for me, it, it's definitely true. I don't think any of us on this uh, chat would do very well. In I was just going to say, isn't that what we have pages for? <laughs> well, not even on pages, they're not secure. But as I was saying, none of us would do well in prison without internet. No, so, no, no. <laughs> I, I would literally start shaking like I'm DT and from alcohol or something. Like, oh god, <laughs> oh god. <laughs> but and, you know, Facebook. Don't get me wrong. Facebook. There's a place for Facebook. If you want to share a legitimate, and I'm, I'm going to say the word legitimate, news story. If, if you want to, you know, if you want to share information, uh, contact other nons for non-incriminating chats. And I'm being very specific in what I'm saying here because I want people to know. Facebook is not the place for ops. Facebook is not the place for pictures of the uh, government sites you just dosed, you know, or whatever. It's just not the place for it. That can because be used I don't, against you in a I court of law. <laughs> I don't mind seeing the promotion of, of some ops like uh, – like the op OPEC that I've seen recently, um, it's an op I fully support. And I think that, uh, you know, you do have to have a channel to, uh, you know, to communicate with the general public as well to inform them because a lot of people view, um, view uh, you know, groups like anonymous or offshoots of groups like, you know, um, a as threatening. Absolutely. Um, they so look at it, domestic terrorists. Yeah. But, you know, if you could put out, what is actually happening now? I would highly suggest that the person that is running those pages is not hands-on involved in the op. They might know somebody and know how to communicate with them securely on other means and be able to pass said information, um, because that's the way leaks happen, right? That's the way that information Absolutely. like that, like the like the uh, Vault Seven leaks happen. Like uh, Raymond was saying, that was all over the dark net. Um, yeah. You know, I, I mean, but it wasn't. That, it wasn't. You know? So somebody didn't post it on, in a Facebook group. <laughs> like, oh, God, no. You know, yeah, I got it, asked that question the other day. And why aren't you all in a whole bunch of Facebook messenger groups? Why don't I ever see you there? Because uh, I, I almost, messenger I almost had so a choke laughing. I almost yeah. had a choke laughing. I do not want that effing drama. <laughs> if other females do, that's fine. Well, if other know, people want to be in tons of groups, a, that's cool. Have you ever walked into a chat I can't room? do it. Yeah, when people start deleting each other and. Now they got the new ones with the admin controls, and I'm just like, dude, I don't want to deal with that kind of drama. No, so I'm cool. I'm cool because is I just don't want to be in all and everybody all in my business. I want to be able to do ops and focus. And I mean, communicating about ops is one thing, like street activities and stuff like that. But like you guys said, Facebook is not the place to be. Not not doing any kind of sensitive work, uh, no. by any means. I mean, I, I might not have been able to shut up here tonight. <laughs> you may even talk my face off, but a lot of people know that when it comes to being online, I don't say a lot, really. I'm not not big on being vocal online, uh, at least on, you know, Facebook or Twitter, which I do have a Twitter account, but I, I'm not overly vocal on there. I don't even like to communicate. Even with my friends, I would prefer to call them. <laughs> You know what I mean, but there are, there are places where I do have conversations. What do you that, What do you uh, think about using XMPP uh, servers for communications? I, um, like, are you talking like using Pigeon messaging or something? Yeah. Like off the record. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, actually, you know what? I was reading reading the other day about how that is one of the few um, forms of communication that is still considered extremely secure. Although I guess you know, in light of the Vault Seven stuff, um, if you're running if you're running X XAMP on your phone, which some people do, um, then yeah, you're 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 probably not as secure as you think you are. Um, but yeah, I like uh, I use Jabber all the time. Yeah, That's Jabber. Secure. Yeah, I use Jabber all the time for for secure communications. Yeah, because I, um, I mean, I was, I, I mean, I played around with Wicker Me and stuff like that, and you know, it has its limitations. You know, on uh, I tried it on. Um, they had its limitations on uh, you couldn't do group messaging and stuff like that. But I get, I get it. You know, it's end to end encryption, but it has a, Wicker. You know, I don't. Yeah, Wicker, has, I don't it, trust very I much. I don't. Yeah, it has. It, it promises a lot, but it has its limitations as far as what it's capable of. See, like, uh, like when I use Jabber, like, um, you know, you have to connect through Tor, which a lot of people argue that Tor is not secure. Um, Tor is as secure as Tor is secure as the user that's using it. Um, the browser has been exploited for sure, and, and um, you know, I use a Torque file when I connect to Tor that makes sure that I don't exit through any exit nodes in America. Great Britain, France, Canada, you know, I exclude my exit nodes to countries that have no laws, basically. <laughs> have you ever <laughs> you used, know what I mean? Um, and, I, I know everybody always talks shit about me, but I've been always been a big, big fan of using the um, Underwolf program, the non-surf. You no, play oh, with, it? with a non-surf, like, uh, like Parrot, like on the Parrot boxes? Well, yeah, no, I got it, I got it, I got it got it on uh, Cali, you know, working and it, it's, you know, it's slow as fuck, but still I feel, I feel safer using it than I would you you, know, VPN. Definitely. You know what? There's a, there's another app um, that I actually, uh, a, a good friend of mine actually is one of the coders that, that wrote uh, the, the bulk of the script, but there's a GUI, there's a GUI uh, version of it too. It's called Anonymate, uh, a non, A-N-O-N, M Y eight, like the number eight. Uh -huh. And, uh, it basically, uh, it, it will, it sets up Provoxy, Polypo. Um, and then you can use John Doe, which is another good app as well for, uh, having your tour. I have uh, exit, John through, Doe. Yeah. exit through there instead. Um, but my, my buddy, it, it goes through the anon sec tunnels, um, and, uh, connects, connects through there. Um, it comes with custom torque files, uh, the, the the GUI I believe, but I actually helped with uh, with the testing on the uh, the original script that that was built off of. You can find it on Kitploit, which is a good spot for finding any kind of tools related to network security of any type. But uh, and I believe actually it's on GitHub as well. Anonymate is, but uh, yeah, I actually helped with the testing on that. Wasn't there um, some the, wasn't there some sort of version and I I, 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 not, I never actually saw it, but I saw a video of a tweaked version of Linux that was that was anonymous or something. Um you ever heard? Tails. Yeah. Tails. No, 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 no. Hoonix Hoonix Gateway. All right. So if uh, another way, another good thing to do uh, that you could do is if you want to set up a uh, virtual box. Um, I actually run a lot of stuff like this. Um, I'll run VirtualBox on a, on a VM on a host system. Then I have the Hunix gateway, which functions as a Tor router, and it funnels all of your traffic through Tor. And uh, you connect one your other virtual machines through the Hunix gateway, like a route, like a router. Through like you have to set set up your your you have to manually set up your network, but. Um, it's not it's not all that complicated. A few internet tutorials, I'm sure, will point you in the right direction. But uh, yeah, it basically runs through there. I would run a VPN with Tor as well, um, always, just for the added protection. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I would go through Tor to VPN. Um, but you know, that there and and like I said, John Doe is another one um, that you can set uh, to. Uh, have Tor exit through there, um, through port 4441, uh, through John Doe. Um, there's lots of different, there's lots of different ways. I2P is another good dark net that I like to use. Oh, um, I, I, was will, a bi I was big on, I, the, the one page is always up there, the Dallas Hackers Club. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I2P. That's I. I will not use IRC without being on I2P. IRC 2P. Yeah. Uh, the which only thing I hate about I2P, and I don't know if you guys have finished. Slow as fuck. Yeah, it takes about thirty <laughs> minutes for it to find the next hop, and then then you gotta like. You gotta like tweak um, it a little bit, and then you. If you then, turn your band, if you turn your bandwidth way up, you'll get a lot better connection. But a lot of times, you gotta sit there, like if you're surfing, uh, surfing the web through I2P, and you're like, it'll be like cannot connect to server, and yeah. you have to hit refresh <laughs> like ten times. But you know, if you're serious about being like having anonymity, if you're serious about that, then it it's a small price to pay. You're gonna take every precaution needed. Yeah, exactly. With that being said, for those listening, uh, trying to do anything on your grandma's computer is a bad idea. <laughs> Plus your grandma will find out. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, yeah, stay off of Windows if you can. I know. Um, I, have that, to bro- I have to broadcast this on, on a Windows box because I always have problems with plugins and stuff on, uh, on Kali. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Linux is bad for that. Drivers and pl- and different plugins and compatibilities and like, you know, what I mean, like uh, it's audio. Always, for example, always audio is always the biggest one. It gets really yeah. frustrating after a while. I've, I I do a lot of work on uh, Linux based servers, and I I, I want to take a baseball bat to them half the time. Yeah, he didn't make yeah. a driver for this for this device. You're like, oh shit. Then <laughs> and workarounds are very limited. Yes. Yes. You know the best thing about Linux is the is the fact that it gives you full the amount of full control you have over your systems. Uh, but Linux is, I mean, a lot of people have a false sense of security by running Linux. Um, <laughs> running Linux does not guarantee you anything. I actually had my browser hooked fairly recently. Um, I actually building a vulnerable web application myself. That's uh, that's a it's it's a WordPress site. Uh, you know, with PHP and MySQL. And uh, I was going searching for an image um, that I want to use. And so I went surfing the web looking for certain images that related to what I was doing. And I found one that was super cool and I clicked on it and my fucking browser got hooked by some fucking motherfuckers in India telling me that my Windows computer had been infected and to send them my password and serial number (laughs) and a 1-800 number to call. Oh, and, to, uh, to you know what? It, right? They wanted you to pay like to, what, to, 100 rupees? <laughs> it was just something like that. Well, I called them and I was. They were like, "Who's this?" I was like, "Cali." They're like, "Cali, who?" I'm like, "Cali Linux, bitch." I ended up though having to uninstall my network drivers and reinstall. They I, they hooked me good. They got me good, but I went. I I ended up. I got their. I got all their shit now. <laughs> all their base belonged to me now. So, I mean. <laughs> If anybody saw that video of the guy, that it, it was pretty much the exact same thing. And the guy who uh, who he did a video. It's on YouTube. You can find it. And it was pretty much the exact same thing. It was a browser hook and a and a phishing phishing site. And so he decided to email them, and he uh, he uploaded a payload in the email. And uh, you know, I mean, I think he used some stenography or something like that in a screenshot that he sent them. And basically, he hacked them online, and he did it live, and it was just so epic. And then the guy was the guy that he that hooked him with the phishing site was threatening to call the police, and he was just like, "What are you going to tell them that you hacked me, and now I've hacked you back, and you're pissed <laughs> off?" You know? And the guy was like, uh, and then basically he's like, "I'm going to show this to everybody, you know." And the guy he extorted the guy right online, pretty much. <laughs> he was like, "No, you pay me, motherfucker." <laughs> you know, you I didn't know, go you that know, far. You could hack somebody live time with the software that I'm using and stream it somewhere else. <laughs> oh, you got really dead quiet. Yeah, I was wondering what happened there. <laughs> Everybody's I'm taking like, a piss. <laughs> You know, for me personally, and, and maybe I'm just, I don't know, too set in my ways, uh, nothing, a combination of three things, nothing beats it. Chaining proxies, free Wi-Fi somewhere, and a laptop that I can throw away and not give a crap about oh, later. What about old warhogging and air crack? Just <laughs> yeah. 
I wish I wish that was more viable where I live in Canada. The technology is actually really advanced. Like cracking people's Wi-Fi here is fucking next to impossible. Like uh, unless you've got like a, a a hash cracking machine, that's fucking extremely. What about powerful. what about that website Hashcat? Oh uh, no, that, that you pretty man. It would take a long ass time. Like um, all of our all of our. All of our ISPs have like uh, these router modem combos, and they all have locking APs that basically after 10, so you can't brute force them whatsoever. And even if you de deauthenticate them and capture the handshakes and try to crack the hashes, mm -hmm. um, the, they're all salted like insanely fucking complex fucking like hashes that would take for fucking ever to decrypt. I mean, it's not to say they'd be impossible, but if you had like an 8 GPU fucking. 12 core processing hash cracking unit then that might be viable but here like you can't go war driving with your laptop <laughs> i was and, trying to and, and, yeah you're driving around in the car what are you doing like i'm trying to crack somebody's wi-fi in a car <laughs> yeah seriously i was trying to teach somebody how to, well I, actually i was trying to explain a four-way handshake to somebody i think they just retired and 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 broke their computer and and they're off off the grid now or something i think i broke them because they just did not understand it they just it was it was funny, and not, not everybody gets it. I mean, I, I kind of, I think it's kind of a hands-on thing for people to learn. You can't. It's not something that you can explain to somebody. No, and you know there was a point in time where I wouldn't have understood that either. So, like I was saying, it's about sticking with it. But yeah, a lot of people don't get it, and because they don't get it, they give up. They get frustrated very easily. Exactly. Yeah. So I mean. Me, I, I, I think it's embedded in my personality that I can't stand being won over, like, or not won over, but beat. I can't Absolutely. stand losing to the machine. <laughs> Absolutely. You get those moments when you get so pissed off you just want to throw it across the room. <laughs> yeah, all the time. My, my wife could tell you, I sit here and literally pull my hair. Like, my hair just is, is completely spiked on end by the end of it because I get so mad my blood pressure must be through the roof. I start sweating, and I start pulling on the front of my hair, and it's all fucking, like, bohawked in the front and stuff just for me pulling on it. And I'm, like, cursing and swearing under my voice. God damn this fucking thing. I'm going to throw it over the balcony. I swear to God. You know, it's, it's really weird because – and this is this – is, don't laugh at me. Um, promise me you will not laugh at me. But out of all the languages that I've learned, it was harder for me to learn Python than anything. And I don't understand why, but it was just, it was so frustrating for me to just get it. My mind could not grasp it at first, and it took me months, probably twice as long to learn any other language. I've heard other people say that they were very experienced in other languages, like prior to. Yeah. But I was pretty noob myself, and it was other than HTML, uh, which was the very first thing I ever did. But... Um, I went to Python after that, which, you know, in hindsight, I actually wish I had gone to VB first and like some of the other languages, but um, other people had told me that Python was a good language because of the way it relates to English. I think a lot of people that code that have um, certain formation, like, uh, you know, I mean, certain structures and certain, uh, certain syntaxes into their head, I think Python is almost, it's like, keep it simple, stupid. Yeah, absolutely. I I, I, I I think I had a tendency to overthink it. It's probably what it was, and uh, it's just it's it was just very frustrating. Yeah, I, I I've seen that. I've I've heard a couple people say that actually. I've heard a couple people say that, but uh, you know, I'd say one of the easier places to start is with Bash scripting, though. You know, I mean, it's pretty pretty simple stuff like building bash scripts. If you know if you know syntax for your commands, it's pretty pretty easy. Um, but uh, you know, like you were saying earlier, I encourage everybody to go out. I, I'm no master at coding at any particular language, <laughs> uh, but but I I took it upon myself to understand it so that when I am reading code, that I I know what I'm looking at and I know what I'm looking for. I still have problems with English, hell, so I obviously... I, yeah, I, I, I'm the most dyslexic person, so when things I, I make, they don't work, I'm just like... I can never spell the word definitely. <laughs> and I type it all the time. 
It's probably one of my most common used words. It's probably saved in my phone incorrectly spelt because I've spelled it that way so many times. <laughs> yeah, my phone's set like equals what? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, going back to what we were discussing earlier about about tech and ways that the government have found to intrude on our lives, our private lives, and you know, uh, a lot of people don't realize. And my brother, being one of them, he's one of the least tech savvy people that I know. He gets a new cell phone and he loads it up with all of these apps. And what a lot of people don't realize is the, that these apps have malware in them that can do, you know, any number of things. And people need to be a little more conscious of what they're doing and what they're adding to an already tainted source, such as your computer that you bought at Best Buy that's got all the software that the government has pre-installed on it. Like, Remember, um, you got do you guys have the 7-Eleven app down in the States where you get free shit every day from 7-Eleven? Yes. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, every so. every huh. time I go there, they're like, do you have the 7-Eleven? I'm like, no. And then I go on a big spiel about it. <laughs> they don't ask me anymore, but... <laughs> Your 40s are on sale? <laughs> <laughs> right? What, wasn't, I, what, didn't, um, for a while, they were selling computers... Um, Without operating systems on, so you could you could choose which one you want, and then they stopped doing it for a while, right? Laptops at seven eleven. At seven eleven. At seven eleven. No, I thought that's oh, I thought that's where you were saying. Oh, you could still like, I mean, you could build a computer with zero operating. System. No, I'm talking about like you know just a laptop with nothing on it. There was a while. I mean, I was seeing it on the on. The, um, I was I I constantly look for for things I can't afford and. Um, for a while, they were selling, you know, just just laptops and towers, you know, with no operating system on it. But you don't see that anymore. You know, a great source for, you know, particularly used laptops for your, you know, um, anti-government enthusiasts. Uh, as I was going back to saying what I was saying earlier, you know, it, are pawn shops. You can wipe them and put anything you want on them, and that, you know, that. and that's the best way for me personally to do it. Uh, because yeah, I always yeah. have I always have an extra disk for you know Cali or Windows or whatever laying around. I've got tons of disks. Just throw it on there, and when you're done with the laptop, pull the RAM and throw the rest away. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> Definitely. Uh, that that's that that uh, that uh, app that I was talking about. That Linux app for uh, for the the. Uh, uh, Metasploit or oh the, the, the fuck sometimes sometimes man it's hard to get the words out uh, the the tour tunneling and, and stuff like that where it says transparent proxies the anonymy it yeah. also has uh, automatic uh, RAM wiping and everything built into it every time you start it or stop it it wipes wipes your RAM clears your cache everything like that so just just another plug for that for that uh, Linux app out there uh, for anybody listening but. Uh, yeah, I mean, and then there's the other thing too. Like people don't think about how they're connected when they make purchases with, say, your bank card, um, and you buy a computer with an IE or or, a, you know, like the the Mac device is connected to a fucking number that's on there. The serial number is yeah. connected, and basically they can track if they really wanted to. That could be tracked back to you, you as can, well. Through you can change. Um, it's it's built into uh, it's built in the Cali. You can you can change it. Uh, with Machanger. Yeah, Mac changer. Machanger, yeah, yeah, Machanger dash R, you know, through a random uh, Mac, Mac. Yeah, that's that's also built into that script I was just talking about as well. It it automatically starts that for you. <clears throat> um, but yeah, yeah, Mac Changer is a good one because, um, you know, I I don't know how many people have have heard of Shodan, but you can search devices uh, through Shodan. That's actually uh, the oh the, the shadow Sh Shodan was or, is he talking Shodan about yeah the I O right yeah yeah that's it you can find you can locate devices by their MAC address <laughs> yeah. I've I it, played it, around with it for the free easy. version don't you have to pay to get the full capability of that search engine um I get the I, I get my API key for free and it's pretty functional I haven't had too many limitations like. I can literally type in uh, .il into the search bar, and it'll just pull up all kinds of shit from Israel. And then you can just search through all these servers, and it'll tell you, like, you know, do they have FTP login with anonymous login, which 
um, anonymous login, literally you type anonymous as your username and leave the password field blank or type in random keys and you can access FTPs. Like, man, it, <laughs> there is a lot of shit. Like, actually, that is the, the DDoS that brought down Dyne. Um, a lot of the research that was done for that and, and finding devices um, was done done through Shodan. And the source code for that program is up on GitHub now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so anybody listening out there, if you want to cripple the internet. <laughs> Go to GitHub. Go to GitHub, yeah. Yeah, Git, I love GitHub. I love that place. I think the... I think the um, the capacity of that program, if you get it hooked up right, it's like 650 megabits. Yeah. Yeah, that's a small price to pay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why am I a federal prison? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a big price to pay. <laughs> that's the price I'm worried about paying about anything. <laughs> yeah. That's another yeah. important thing that we, sh you know, our viewers should probably, you know, think about is, Stay up to date. LOIC is not a reliable piece of software anymore. You're going to get caught. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That, went out yeah. with, that went out with the pool is closed sign. Yeah, that's right. Most people don't even know what the pool is closed even means. So, you know, you guys ever play around AIDS, with them? AIDS, AIDS and stingrays everywhere, fuckers. Uh-huh. There's even like that, that. I don't know. It's a kind of a crap program, but it does have its benefit. It was the UFO net? Yeah, UFO net was pretty good. Uh, I don't. I haven't used that in ever. Uh, yeah, ever. I've never used that. But yeah, um, that that that. I don't know. Uh, I haven't read much about it lately, but it definitely had its use back in the day. It was pretty powerful. Uh -huh. It was basically like a lowest version of a botnet. <laughs> well, it's not a, it's not a real botnet, but <laughs> no, but it, it it had a lot of the same functionality. Yeah. Um, you know, they had servers and people connected all over the place that you know would pool the connections and yeah. But, yeah. Sometimes you'll see the script. You'll see it like if you go to the if you go to the back to the terminal, you'll see it clocking out. You're like, why is this server taking forever to send a fucking packet? <laughs> yeah. yeah which is pretty much useless at that point <laughs> you're like yeah yeah that was that the whole point of getting this program it's like you have yeah, yeah, you, have, not... you have 1500 zombies cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no you don't no definitely probably not but uh you know i like like mark was saying you know if you're using lowick don't <laughs> don't your vpn will not protect you using lowick I don't think anything will protect you anymore. That's how bad it is. Oh. Well, I've had I've had this discussion many times. Um, if you are worth it, if you are worth the resources, they will find you. Um, it's a matter of whether or not you are worth the, their resources. Um, you know, if you're worth pouring a million dollars into hunting down, they're going to find you. If you, you know, if if you're not if what you if what you've done and what you've got is you know nothing to them they're not going to waste the resources chasing after you but you know they they can track your you know they will they will track your tour nodes around the globe track and hunt you down absolutely as, uh, depending on what you do yep you know so, years ago, years ago when i was uh spent my nights weekends and every spare <laughs> moment on hellbound hackers um I learned the hard way about security, and ever since then, I, that's been my first priority, you regardless get, you of what I'm. A funny knock on the door with guys with guys. Exactly, <laughs> regardless if I'm looking at at porn or whatever, you know, I always make sure that I'm that that my you know system is secure, and um, it took me learning the hard way to go. Hey, you know what? I could do some prison time over this, so it's time to you know put a little more effort into it. And everyone else should do that as well that's listening. I was going to say up until, you know, you know, talking about our other guests, you know, um, they now they, because of Aaron's law, um, the, the maximum punishment for getting caught with any of this stuff was 25 plus, right? And yeah. That's too much. Well, then now they got Maybe what's called it. Aaron's law, which they, uh -huh. uh, they've tried to lower some of the cyber crimes because some of it, 
I don't know. When you try to explain to a judge in like simplistic terms that what they really did, yeah, they don't. I don't know. <laughs> it's like it doesn't. It does. It's. A, it almost. It doesn't. I don't know. For me, the crime doesn't fit what they did. No. Well, uh, he paid with his life. Yeah. Um, you know, whether it was suicide or not, they did that to him. Well, so, um, so Aaron because... Schwartz, Aaron Schwartz, he didn't even, he, all he was doing is he was downloading, um, fuck JSTOR. Yeah. He was downloading JSTOR and I don't, I wasn't sure on what exactly he was doing, but Aaron was known for, um, researching this stuff. And apparently all of the documents and papers, um, from colleges and stuff have to go through the J store or whatever it was. And he was downloading that and trying to do some research, but they had incriminated him for, um, what was it? Well, he had actually, he had actually hooked up a laptop, uh, in the server in the basement, room. Yeah. In the basement, at, they caught, yeah. the FBI came in and put in a program or was, um, that was monitoring. A camera. They yeah, put a camera. it, no, they put in an actual camera. Like, you know what I mean? Instead of just trying to stop it, they set up a fucking, you know, they set up a honeypot basically on the guy and then fucking laid into him and tried to make an example out of him. And, you know, all the weight of everything that was coming down on him and what he was facing was obviously too much for the guy. Somebody's saying so John A. Nin Ninpo? Who? I don't know. He's a Canadian guy, I'm pretty sure. Oh, I don't know. You know, it's really sad that, you know, uh, rapists and pedophiles get less time than, you know, social activists. And I'm, I'm being very cautious about the terms I use. I'll just say social activists. But pedophiles get less time in prison than, you know, and it, it kind of tells you how misplaced our and how screwed up our, our so-called justice system is. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, there should be some kind of consideration. I, I don't, I, you know, a differentiation between uh, the letter of the law and the spirit of the law. When people are, are, are facing criminal prosecution, like the Lori Love situation, the guy is not asking to be exonerated right now. He's asking for a fair trial, and he's asking for it in his country. Um, but, you know, I mean, uh, when you look at the, like uh, Raymond was saying, he could face three months to three years in the U.K., um, you know, you're, you're more, nobody said that hacking the U S government was legal, but you know, um, but, but the spirit of the law and the letter of the law, the letter of the law was written after that movie. What was that fucking movie with the nuclear attacks and the hackers? Oh, war uh, games. War, yeah. War games. With yeah. Matthew, with Matthew, bro Matthew Broderick, right? No, we mm -hmm. play a game. <laughs> exactly. And it was, it was brought in. And it was meant to, back then, the internet was all military shit, and these laws were brought in, you know, for for foreign spies and fucking enemies of the state. Um, you know, and that's the way that people that are seeking information um, are, are being treated like they're some kind of fucking enemy of the state that's out to, to uh, you know, cripple the U.S., the United States and, and uh, all of the people that live there when really a lot of them are trying to free them or, or enlighten them to what's really going on in the world. Yeah. I, I've heard of some more, more crippling um, hacks. One of my guys, uh, one of my roommates was a uh, really, really, really good. He was in the hacking things that you would never think about. And, um, mm -hmm. um, you know, he was working for John Deere and, um, um, apparently, uh, John Deere on the big farms had found a way to, um, automate everything via GPS, um, yeah. using, using us, us, yeah, using, using certain connections. And he would say, and, um, this one hacker had come up to the company and had told them that, that they could, um, actually get into, um, the automated farm device, which is all run on computer, uh, computer systems and start, um, cause some of these, some of these, uh, machines, uh, drills to certain to certain depths so the seeds could grow and they were saying that uh somebody could hack into this and uh devastate um the farming community with automated systems you know by lowering the depths the hiring the depths is having to think the you know the seed sprayer just spray out randomly and basically cripple a nation through yeah through that if now that is a real now that is a real danger that, that is a real danger but also it comes, comes down to the point is like why are we having all these machines automated and on and on a connection you know well luckily enough that guy had uh the moral sense 
to bring it to light instead of exploiting it. Um, he, uh, you know the, I mean? the, 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 the guy that came to, uh, my buddies while he, when he was working with him, with them, um, he was, he essentially was going to exploit it, but then he, you know, he felt like, you know, he had some duty to come up to John Deere and tell them, you know, what was up with their system. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't it Mendax that said the truth wants to be free? Let's yeah. set free. Let uh -huh. the people decide. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, well, that's just it. That's why I said, like, earlier in the show, I, I remember saying knowledge knowledge is open source. Um, and that, that applies to pretty much all knowledge as far as I'm concerned, um, whether it be knowledge of what your government is really up to or just knowledge to educate yourself and enlighten yourself. And, you know, in Aaron Schwartz's case, um, I believe his argument, and it seems like a valid one to me, was that he was taking said information uh, you know, to enlighten himself um, and to, uh, you know, work on other projects. And, you know, why should he have to pay JSTOR in order to attain knowledge that should be available to anybody? Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. It's like the, the pat. Have any of you guys ever gone through the U.S. patent records? Holy fuck, there's some fucked up shit on there, man. Um, there, no, I haven't there. actually. <laughs> Uh, you there's, spend there's your life that, going through there, and, and uh, it would take an entire lifetime to look at everything. Yeah. Well, there was one that I came across. Um, I, Mark, you probably know Ab. Uh, Abaddon? Ab Abram. Oh, Abaddon, yeah. Abaddon, yes. Abaddon. Abaddon. I did. Well, <clears throat> this was a few years ago, and he had brought one, brought one up, and I started reading through it, and it was a Google patent about monitors, computer monitors, and television screens and the frequency, the frequency they admit, and you can still search this. I, I'm going to have to find this somewhere, um, but basically used as mind control. To, yeah, I remember uh, that. I, I, I've seen that. Feelings of rage or happiness or whatever it might be. Um, and using, uh, you know, I mean, I think it was 2.4 gigahertz um, frequency emanating from screens to actually control people. And I this is a U.S. patent that is available to anybody, you don't need to hack this. You can. I find think it this. was the, the natural, uh, what they call the butterfly wave. Um, it's like sixty-six kilohertz or megahertz. No, it's megahertz because that'd be um, that'd be radio. So um, <laughs> it was the fluctuations on the TV. Um, they call it the butterfly wave. Um, is like um, that has natural hypnotic um, properties. And essentially, you could do some, uh, you know, you know, uh, you know, mind. The, the theory was that you could do some mind control from the natural os os oscillation of the of the um, waves coming from the TV set. Yeah, yeah. I mean that. Yeah, that. that, that and there, you can search this in the in the U.S. patents records. And this is this is something that Google has registered. I mean. How the government could even look at this and be like, "Oh, cool, yeah, sounds for sure. like a viable way to <laughs> treat your citizens," you know? Yeah, right. Like, how, how there's stuff you in there that, that, uh, it just—it's scary. Some of it's pretty scary. Oh, it, it's very scary. It's it's scary to say the least. Um, I and you know, I mean, this comes down to people educating themselves and the desire to search for things. Um, unfortunately for myself, I, I have to admit that over the last year or so, I've been not nearly as in-depth uh, researching and expanding my own knowledge as I could be. Um, my wife, we got married uh, a little while ago. She, she came here from the States, and she has residency here. Um, right now, she has a temporary residency. We're up in the middle of applying for a permanent residency, but she has no work permits. So I've, I've, I've had to basically support, you know, household on a, on a single, single income. Congratulations. Um, so, thank you. Thank you very much, man. Thank you. You know, I'm in, I'm in the same thing with Sammy because, as you know, she came from Australia and she's yep. just got her paperwork and everything. And not only is it very costly, it's very time consuming and it can get very frustrating after a while. And yeah, she's, we've been going we, we've been going through the same thing, man. It is it is really tough. It is hard. Well, I wish you the best of luck with that, sir. With you know, you and your your new wife, and you know, may you have a life of lifetime of happiness. So, well, yeah, and and like you said, you know, it is very costly. Um, you know, 
we've already spent thousands of dollars and we've got a, a bit more money to spend and a few more documents. And, you know, the hardest part about it is waiting to hear back from them <laughs> saying, yes, yes, you've been approved or yes, you haven't been approved. It's actually, it, 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 it's, it's like, um, it's like going to court or, you know, uh, being with somebody who's having an operation, you, you don't quite know what's going to happen next. Exactly. Fortunately, she's been working, doing like nannying work, which is allowed. Um, a lot. It's the one thing you're allowed to do here um, without, uh, without a work permit. So she's been picking up part-time work recently. So it's been easing the burden quite a bit. But there was, you know, nine months of basically, you know, me working endlessly and tirelessly uh, more than I had in the past, uh, you know, to put food on the table. And you know, I, I, I'm a firm believer in the way that the, the economy is set up that, uh, you know, um, we have to work set amount of hours in order just to get by. Yeah. And I, I believe that the big reason that that is, is to keep us uneducated. Because yeah. I find even myself having to support us both during this time, I don't have the time to read. And I don't want her to hear this and feel bad because I, I by all means, I would do anything for, the, for her, I, it, no matter what it took. I, I would make any sacrifice, whatever it may be. But, I mean, it has taken a toll. Um, oh, absolutely! I'm sure it has. I have a lot of friends from. Uh, I have a lot of friends from Winnipeg, and they they tell me a lot of stories about how difficult it is to get citizenship in Canada. It's it's way harder than America. Actually, it's absolutely. Funny because I heard you. I heard America, you, can't, you can't even um, if you have a DUI or, or a drug charge. No, nope, you can't, you can't even come into Canada. Damn. I guess I can't go. <laughs> no, she actually, actually, the first time we came, um, because we actually met online um, through Anonymous, actually, um, and we talked and talked and talked and talked forever. And the first time that she actually ever came to Canada, I went down there and met her family. I spent a couple weeks down in Philadelphia and, uh, you know, had a, had a wicked time. So we crossed over into Canada and we got there. And they scooted me through the border check and then, or through customs, and then they held her, and then they refused her entry into Canada um, based on she had been charged with something um, that she had actually been uh, cleared of, but the, the records hadn't been updated yet either. So she, she, there was no record of her being found guilty of it, but there was also no record of her like being you know, found innocent either. And they actually turned her away at the fucking border. And we had flown, we had spent thousands of dollars on flights because I don't live in the city I grew up in. And so I flew from the West Coast of Canada to Philadelphia. And then we had already purchased our tickets from there to Halifax, which is on the East Coast, which is where I grew up. And then from Halifax to, to the West Coast of Canada. And I mean, it was expensive. And then she got turned, turned away. Um, you know, so that was frustrating at the least, but, you know, we went through the proper means. She went to the courthouse down there. She had everything updated, all of her information. She did come back to Canada and they let her in. And then, uh, she was here on her, her, her visitor's visa, uh, which was six months. And then we extended that again, which cost another pile of money. And we got married and, and all that. Now we're just waiting to, to finish the final paperwork. But man, if you're trying to support a fucking family or even any kind of dependent, being able to enlighten yourself and educate yourself becomes a real task because the amount of time that you have to put in every day just to get by, and I'm sure it's the exact same in, in America. Um, I, I think it's actually much, worse. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it is. You know, it, it doesn't leave you any time to, to educate and, 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 and gain knowledge. And I think that, that the system is designed that way on purpose. They don't want so an well. educated they don't want an educated electoral, you know, pool of, uh, they don't actually want educated voters when it comes time for election, or you wouldn't have had an election between uh, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, those, you know, it's I, hard to believe that those were our cho only choices. Uh, <laughs> you, you I, won't even, believe how, I won't even go into politics, but I mean, it's hard to believe that those were our only choices. I, I'm going to go into it very briefly. You would believe how often I go and troll Hillary supporters and get called a Donald Trump supporter. Oh, I'm absolutely. Like, I'm like, no, no, you know, no. My wife said it best. It's the dumbing down of America. Yeah. And it is. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, it definitely is. It's the dumbing down of the world, though. And that's that's where I think that America is uh, hell-bent on domination. I, actually, I don't think that they plan on holding the world hostage with nuclear arms. I feel like they want to dumb down the world. <laughs> you know no, what they, I mean? Yeah, they don't, impose, they don't want you to know what's world. going on. They don't want anyone. It's, it's like the, uh, the meme, go back to sleep. Your government is in control. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's perfectly said, you know. That's exactly it, but they're not supposed to be in control. No, it's absolutely to, not. It's supposed to be that they work for us. They're they're actually our servants, you know. But meanwhile, they get these massive pensions, unre, un, like unrealistic salaries for anybody, you know. I mean, that could ever like you or I could ever hope. Like, man, I work a dangerous ass job. I work power lines, and uh, you know, I make. I, I I have to say, I am way better off than a lot of people. I do work a very high paying blue collar job. Um, but still, I even being in the position I'm at, which is well above average for Canada even, um, I still find it hard to get bought. You, you know what I mean? I can't even imagine how people with m minimum wage and families, I, I can never even fathom how they even exist, like how they even manage to, to exist and continue putting a roof over their head like, you know, how many stressful nights they must have because I have a lot of stressful nights worrying about money. I hate to say it, but I do. Uh, uh, same here. Being, being, real, being realistic, <laughs> you know, you know I'm, I'm, I'm better off. I'm better off than the majority of people. So that means the majority of people stress more than I do. You know, and I, I want to I wanna do a shout out to places like, you know, St. Vincent's de Paul, St. Mary's Food Bank. You know, some of these some of some of these groups that help some of these you know, lower, and I'll use the word lower income families, you know, by giving them, you know, boxes of food. I mean, if it wasn't for groups like these, some of these people wouldn't even have a roof over their head. And a lot of these people have children who go to bed with empty stomachs. And that right there should tell the majority of even the people who are yet to be awakened that there's something really wrong. The fact we have, we have empty bellies at all, when the amount of money that's poured into, and not just in America, but in the military, uh, primarily, you know, what what they call defense, which, I, I mean, when was the last time America had to defend itself? How do they even have a Department of National Defense? They don't have to defend themselves against anything. They're, they're on the offense more often than not, but I can guarantee you that the amount of money spent on military, if it was even cut in half, which would still leave them as one, one of the world's major military powerhouses if they even cut military spending in half they wouldn't have any social program problems and the ones they did have would be based off of things like mental illness and things that were out of the control of of the everyday people and you know we could still have programs for them I, of course we'd still have problems but a lot of them would relate more to uh on an individual level and not epidemic And it, and it truly is an epidemic. That, that's a very good word, Jay. Epidemic. It, it is. Hunger has become an epidemic, and it's it's unthinkable that it has. It's despicable that it has, really. Yes. Um, yes you know, I mean, there was a time. Um, you know, like I said, I I do work a job that I do get paid above average, but I've also had my wages frozen for the last five years, and the the cost of living has gone up. And there was a point in time where I used to hand out twenty dollar bills to motherfuckers on the street and not think twice about and donate, you know, and, and, and do a lot of things that I actually can't do anymore. I can't afford to do anymore. And I wish I could, I feel bad. I feel terrible when I see somebody begging. Actually, I came to a fucking intersection today and there was a dude, one of those sign, sign flyers, you know, I mean, homeless, you know, I mean, walks up to every window, whatever. Uh, they squeegee in the summer, but it's too goddamn cold right now to squeegee. It just freeze to your windshield. But, uh, you know, I mean, I looked at him, I started digging for change, and I literally didn't have a penny of, of change on me. And I was like, fuck, I'm sorry, man. But I at least, like, made sure I made eye contact with the guy and let him know, like, man, I am honestly sorry. Yeah. I wish I could help you. And yet thousands of houses go vacant. And, you know, and... and, no, it, and there, plus, there, yeah, go ahead. And, and, you know, and twice as many more people who, who actually need a warm place to stay besides the whole, you know, hunger issue. 
And it, 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 Detroit. It, yeah, Detroit, South Detroit. Mm. Why can't the federal government buy up a huge section of that? And oh, I, I know why. It, it's kind of a rhetorical question, but, you know, I mean, people that, I'm sure there could be some kind of vetting process to say that this homeless person, they've got an education, they had a job for 15 years at the same employment, and now they, they lost everything. Why can't we just give them a house? Why can't the government say, instead of buying a nuke, we're going to buy up 20 blocks of Detroit and, and house, you know, 500 families, homeless families, that are willing to contribute? Yeah, I... I... I don't get it either. I, I truly don't. Our our um, our values are so screwed up. Our priorities are screwed up. Everything's just one big mess. And you know, it, it, there's gonna have to we're gonna have to reach some sort of critical mass to turn things around. We really are. And yeah. I don't just mean I don't just mean in the United States. I mean on a global level, because yeah. th there's just too many things that we've become. You know. Used to, we've, we've built up this tolerance to like, you know, like homeless people, like, you know, like abuse, like, and it, it, we see it on the news every day and we know the news is bullshit, obviously, but we see it on the news every day and we're, and we're used to it and nobody really truly uh, tries to do anything to solve the problem. And it, it, it can be very frustrating for somebody who, people like us actually, who want to see things change. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I hate to say this. Um, I know this is the anonymous bites back. I'm probably going to get some bite back for this one, but huh. I actually feel like violence is the only solution. I know a lot of people would disagree with me, but I, I hate to say it. I don't even like even fathoming it, but I really feel like until we start to show, you know, the people that have manipulated us and taken control of us, that their actions will yield severe consequences possibly paying with your life that it is not okay to exploit us as a as a population that it will continue because otherwise i mean they have so much money that they could never lose the amount of money they have a lot of people say well let's hit them in the pocketbook and i agree with you there i'm like no. they, they have you enough have... money to last them for like thousands of years so god knows how much money they leave yeah have. if you have if you have 80 billion dollars and you lose 10 billion it means not seventy billion dollars. Yeah, exactly. You know, as an anon, I, I I preach love, respect, and you know, unity. But as as a human being, the reality of it for me is, and I've said this openly on posts on Facebook. The reality of it is, if we're ever truly to change it, and going back to what you said, Jay, it, it's going to have to be a revolution. And with revolution comes violence, and it, it's going to be it's going to be bloody. And that's a reality a lot of people are going to have to face. I, I agree totally, and like you, I also preach love, but I think that the love and respect is going to come after the revolution. I think that's something that we need to strive for, but I don't think that the means of achieving that is through through holding up signs, which I've protested many times, um, you know what I mean, but uh, but through putting heads on stakes. I for, agree. For, for, for their counterparts and their, their cohorts to see. Um, in the end, because otherwise, like we were saying, like eighty billion dollars. If you have eighty billion dollar fortune and you even lost half of your fortune, you're still worth forty billion dollars, which is more money than any one person could spend in a lifetime. So, you know, what 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 incentive do these people have to make any change? No matter what happens, they're always going to have more money than anyone could ever even fathom of spending. You know, and I've seen John preach that a lot. You know about about you know violence and retribution and all these things and and in some ways it's made him very unpopular but john fairhurst yes but yeah. on the on the same token i think he he sees things a lot clearer than a lot of people and he sees that he sees it's not necessarily that he he doesn't necessarily you know like the idea of it or agree with the idea of it but he sees the reality of it and there's a big difference between those three things well, the fact of the matter is that the utopia is not going to exist until what we have now doesn't, and they're not going to relinquish what exists now peacefully. I can promise that. No, they're going to fight so, tooth and nail after we start you know, um, peacefully protesting, and then what they're going to do is if we, we get too far, 
They're going to pull out the guns. They're going to pull out the military. That's already happening. Look yep. at the military. Somebody mentioned militarizing of police. That is already happening. They're fighting tooth and nail right now. And they're winning, sadly. They're winning. I hate to say it, but they are winning right now because... Do you think um, they would actually? Do you think they would actually go on a full-on combat war with the United States military versus the versus the citizens? I absolutely I think, think so. I think they would, but I think eventually that the 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 human aspect of those people fighting against their own people when their aunt or uncle is murdered or or someone they knew will change. Eventually, it's going to affect everybody. It's going to have to affect them in a human way that they can no longer agree with it. Absolutely so, right. I think that's why I think ultimately through that bloody revolution we will win. You know, and and, and I, I see things getting a lot worse. I, I envision a time when you're going to be walking down the street and a militarized police officer is going to ask you. He's going to say something like, "Papers, please." And doesn't that already check, happen down there? You know, to a certain extent, it has happened, but with the checkpoints. It, Absolutely, to a certain extent, but I'm talking about a full scale, you know, in every every city and town in the you know in the United States, where there's checkpoints of people asking you for papers and proof of citizenship. I mean, it's it, you're right, it is happening, but not on a larger scale yet, and I envision that. Well, that that's the thing. They're they're taking a play. They're taking a page out of Hitler's playbook, you know, uh, where you chisel away one right at a time so that people don't even notice. Um, you know, they can't just pull on, just take everybody, because that will cause the uprising. But if it's like, okay, this, this year you're going to lose these three rights. Next year you're going to lose these two, these five. And then all of a sudden, 30 years later, you yeah, know, but... there's a whole lot of rights that people had before that they don't no longer have. And, you know, a lot of people say it started with the Patriot Act and things like Agenda 21. Oh, it happened way before then. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it's been happening for at least 50 years. And um, people, it's happened so gradually that people don't tend to notice it because they're so wrapped up in their, you know, in their own, you know, with their own problems like feeding their families and, and you know, having a roof over their heads and, I forget who it was that was there. Uh, it was one of the people there when they signed the Constitution. And one of the discussions that they had when they decided to uh, implement uh, this form of democracy was that they wanted to implement democracy, but not full-fledged democracy, because people of lower statute were incapable of making decisions, important decisions, and that they would give an illusion of democracy I feel like when, uh, you know, when the slaves were freed, um, basically what ended up happening was not that they were like, let's free the slaves. It was more along the lines of, hey, you know what? Why are we only enslaving black people and these people when we could literally enslave everybody? The world. And like I was saying earlier, when you work nine to five or nine to nine to nine, if you work 12 hours a day, to put just enough money in your pocket to eat and have a roof over your head and one or two very small luxuries, how are you actually any different than that slave? That slave master put a roof over that slave's head and he put food in his belly so that he could go out and plow that field the next day. And pick I totally that agree. I totally agree. You know, I, I, I started to write a post the other day, but I felt like if I wrote it that I would offend some of my African-American friends, and that's not what I intended. Uh, it, it, it had something to do with the topic of, you know, the, the, the military, the police departments are the Uncle Toms of the government. And, you know, um, we uh, if you want to know about slavery and oppression and, and things like that, talk to an African-American who generations ago were enslaved and brutalized. They can tell you firsthand about things like slavery and oppression. And I truly believe that, that, you know, law enforcement and military and all of these, you know, corrupt officials are the Uncle Toms of the government. 100%. I, I think the civil rights movement has taken a huge step backwards over the last few years. It has. Um, the whole Black Lives Matter, and I'm not knocking their roots, um, but I, I, I think, like, the idea got kind of polluted where it started turning... Uh, white against black, and that is the complete opposite of what the 
the civil rights movement was actually about. Um, you know, Martin Luther King didn't want black people to rule the world. He wanted black people to share in the exact same equality that the white people did, and for anybody and everybody for that matter. You know, I mean, to have exactly equal opportunities. Um, but, you know, with everything that's gone on in this whole uh, racist cop bullshit, I mean, yes, I actually agree that the cops are racist. I think that that's bred into them through through some kind of generational bullshit because most cops, not all, but most are low IQ um, individuals with bully complexes um, that were teased or in other in other ways, um, you know, I mean, talked down to or or beat down when they were younger. Absolutely, um, I agree, one hundred percent. Police violence is not only to say that police only shoot black people is a falsity on its own as well they shoot mexican people they shoot white people they shoot filipino people they shoot people all the fucking time unsubstantiated i actually and think that i think it, the the um the actual the, sorry it's just going on a tangent go ahead uh well no it's it's just that yes i think there is a higher percentage because the because the black population well actually is vulnerable. The, when they did when they did the statistics on 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 the people who actually got shot they said that white people were more um statistically um and this was done by uh, the lgbt community did a study on uh, the actual statistics that they said that white people were more likely to get shot by a police officer than any other race um, I think the numbers were higher, but I, I'm not I'm not 100 percent. But I think I think I saw something about that. And after looking into it, it, it actually kind of was almost like it was truth, but almost like disguised in a way that, yes, a lot more white people had actually been shot. But if you did the comparison of the uh, percentage of population um, per yeah. capita, black yeah, you people can always see. Yeah, just the, yeah, the data can always look one way or the other. I got you. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, that's. That's not to say, I, I think that the reason that black people were are being shot at a higher rate it is is due to, uh, is, is due to, uh, you know, um, uh, how do I put this? Almost like, uh, you know, the standard of living that is not all, also not their fault, but it, it, it was brought on by, uh, you know, generational, uh, you know, um, pre, preconceptions and stuff like that. And, and the way that they were, you know, treated because of racism that fostered, uh, you know, these environments that were not necessarily always healthy, um, you know, ghettos and stuff like that, public housing projects that that were populated with black people because they were not given a fair chance, uh, you know, during the 60s, 70s, 80s. And so because of that, those, those, those things exist um, and still do exist. Um, they are getting, you know you become a product of your environment quite often. Um, but that's not to say that the, the police brutality issue is an all race thing. Yes. It, uh, yes. it does happen. It does happen more frequently to them. And it is very unfortunate. And I do believe that some of it is race based, but as a whole police, like we all know activists out in the street, you're going to get fucking maced, whether you're white, black or, or fucking native American. If you're on the front lines protesting something, or batoned, uh, or get or get roughed or, up, or batoned. I mean, Dapple, the No Dapple protests were were a pretty good example a of that because there were lots of white people, black people, and Hispanic people, and Native people all protesting together, which was a great show of unity, um, you know, on a race base uh, that we desperately needed. Like I said, because of the, I feel like the civil rights movement has actually been set back. Recently, and the government the does not like that. They do not like that unity. No, <laughs> they do no, not. and that's what I feel like. That whole, you know, I mean, the whole, like I said, the civil rights movement being moved backwards. I believe that that's basically a psyop of the government, um, in some way, shape, or form. Um, I don't have any documents to support this. This is just theory of my own, and just you know, being intuitive and seeing what I see. But you know, creating that. That environment for black people to turn on white people, um, you know, it, it's almost seems like a psyop of the government to me to create they that wanna, division. They want to create that division and that separation. I mean, you know, and it goes back to you know pre-civil rights movements where there was a uh, there was a fountain for the white people to drink from, a fountain for the 
you know, brown people to drink from, the, a fountain for the African Americans. Oh, there were no brown people back then. So, but I, I'm just, I, you know, I'm just kind of <laughs> yeah. using that as an example. Yeah, that, I was just joking. They, about, yeah. yeah, I know what you said. They want to keep that division alive and well because it it, it creates weakness. It, it creates, you know, divisions. And if all of us, I mean, you know, purple, green, red, brown, white, blue, whatever the hell. If all of us stood up all together all at once and said, you know what, we've had enough and we're not going to take it anymore. It's time for a change. We could make sure busy. If, if we're busy hating each other, we'll never do that. No, we won't. I, I mean, look at and, the LGBT community right now. I mean, uh, they're on the end of a, a huge amount of oppression everywhere. I, I mean, uh, people are biased towards them. I mean, and uh, I remember being biased towards gay people when I was younger. Yeah, yeah, I remember I, you being know, that. You know, I, I used to be the same way too until you know, like I think it was like junior high. You know, when I found out that you know a bunch of my friends, you know, were, you know, you know, swing that way. And you know, the, the more I got to know them, it was, you know, it was like after a while, it was like nothing. You know. Yeah. And, and you know, and there's some of the. I have a lot of friends who are gay, and you know, and and so on. And they're some of the most down to earth people on the planet. Exactly. I'm, so yeah. And 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 in many ways. They're more respectful. I, you know what? I'm, I'm going to go as far as to say, in a lot of ways, they're more respectful than heterosexuals will ever be. In some ways, yeah. It, it, and, I mean, they have the right to exist in their own existence. It doesn't have any effect on my life, so why should I give a fuck? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, their choices in life are their choices. We were all born with free will. It's the only thing we were born with is free and will. That free will is, you know, is what is what the people in power wish to take from us. Exactly. But these people are fighting back just like the black people did at one point in time, just like brown people are going through right now with the Islamophobe yeah. um, yeah. bullshit that uh, you know we've perpetuated. Um, I, I don't blame. I don't blame some brown people that want to fucking bring death upon America when they watch their son or their niece or their nephew be being blown like, killed in a drone didn't I, strike. Didn't I, didn't I ever, didn't, wasn't, didn't I talk about that, you know, a few, a few shows ago where, um, it's, you know, it, it's not the bombing of the foreign countries that creates, you know, people that yeah, you know, yeah. it's retaliation. It's the people that survive the bombings. You just killed their fucking family. What the fuck are you, am I going to do? I'm going to retaliate, you know? Fuck yeah, I would. Me too. I would. Same you know, there. if it was if it was them that came here, just like you know, the whole retaliation for nine eleven. You know, how let's they, just say you know, that how that wasn't say an this? insight. You know, you know, I even get I can even get biblical on this. You know, I can be like, violence begets violence. You know, you 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 do something violent, you're gonna get a violent response. That's the Absolutely. only that's the only thing the system knows. That's the only thing. Yeah. That, and has it? Yeah, has, that's just. Has, it's, has, it's perpetual. It's has perpetual. Vi- no, no, in, the, in the history of mankind, and I hate to say this, you know, um, has violent conquests and um, takeovers. Whoa. Hello. Hello. I'm taking. I'm taking a leak. <laughs> oh no no no! I, I was watching my, my my other graph bar um, go off. Um, but no, I was saying that you know violent conquests and uh, takeovers. Um, they do establish what historically what they want to do, but in long term, long term, does it actually work? No. Exactly. There was a um, a guy. I don't even know if I can loop it to that, but I can kind of like every, every, every empire. Yes, the people you, you that, know you know what I'm talking about, Sir Francis Doyle, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. The the history of empires was a very famous guy. Well, not very famous, but uh, he wrote a 21-page um, um, it is, essay. It is very, well, quite famous, anyway. Well, yeah, yeah, but I, I know, but you know, there's a lot of you know to the you know to the everyday Joe Schmo, you know, you know, the, the fate of empires isn't isn't a big thing, but um, you know, um, you know what we're seeing here in America um, uh, is, is the fall of an empire, and you know what, and I hate to say this, okay, there is nothing you can do to revamp it because. It's fucked. <laughs> yeah, prob- pretty much, yeah. I mean, rev- it depends on your definition of revamp, I suppose. Um, to say that everybody in America 
is doomed it is no no i'm not you know, saying i'm that, not saying I, the people is doomed i'm saying but the, the, the government yeah they're all doomed zombie apocalypse zombie apocalypse just needs <laughs> to no, happen already the government can't the government of america and canada and great britain and australia and france they can't sustain at the way that they're working forever it is it, 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 if, if it doesn't happen in our lifetime, it will happen in the not too distant future after our lifetime that they can so many sustain. There's so many different things that we could do to prevent that from happening. And there's not enough people that want to be involved to make those changes. I mean, every little bit counts, though. Like, I'm getting involved in community gardening, um, you know, getting into solar, renewable energies. These are all different things that need to be promoted a lot more. I mean, and again, it's like waking, awakening a sheep, you know. A lot of people ultimately, aren't listening. Ultimately, though, I think those things will be promoted for profit eventually. Yeah. Is the, is the fucked up thing about, exploited, you know, Everything. because exploited. as they as those things gain more popularity and become viable businesses, they will be corrupted by by our fucking our fiat currency, World Bank, fucking central banking cartel, fucking bullshit. I mean, they already tax water. Why why wouldn't and you know why wouldn't they uh, destroy any chance of renewable energy for us? Speaking of which, I just I have. Was, I was gonna. I was I, some one of these days. I'm gonna start stream. I'm gonna. I'm gonna show that video for the audience. Uh, so I think it's a good one. Um, America, freedom to fascism. You guys ever seen that? That's the one you showed me yes. the other day. Yeah. I haven't seen it. No. Yeah, it's it's a Aaron, documentary stuff. It's an Aaron oh, Russo right. film. Really? Yeah. Yeah. There's a website. I think it's called freedocumentaries.org, and they have all kinds of uh, of really really good documentaries. And I, I watched that on there fairly recently. Actually, it was the first time I saw it. Um, have you guys ever seen uh, the Four Horsemen video? Yes. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that the one that has to do with psychops in here in America? Yes, and it, it relates to the entire economic structure as well. Um, I first got, I got my first taste of like kind of that stuff uh, when the very first Zeitgeist movie came out. Um, that's kind of when I started, you know, questioning things a little bit more. Um, I wasn't a hundred percent sure on their their factual, you know, factuality, but it started making me question um, the way that that things uh, around us kind of coexist, and and over over time I've started to see a lot of correlations. Um, that you know, I I wish I had the time to write a lot of these things down, but just in my own head, the way that I see, uh, the way corporations, um, like you were saying, like renewable resources and renewable energy, yep. and solar power and stuff, those things are all amazing, and we definitely need to to start investing in those things. But I I promise you that they will find a way to corrupt those things. <laughs> no and and I'm what. sure of I mean. Being in Arizona, we're, we're a state that has the ability of having so much solar energy. And I, you know, being in the sales, marketing, advertising industry, I've seen so many companies rise and fall. And we're in a huge tech boom here in Arizona. But so much small businesses are being bought out by large corporations and silenced. I mean, the products are good. The ideas that are coming out for solar energy are really good. But even even the extra even the extra um, electricity you have with solar energy, they take from you, you know? Okay. So it's not like something you could keep for yourself. See, here the utility will actually buy it back at this point in time. They will actually, if you generate more than you use, they will actually purchase it from you. Um, yeah, but at their at, rate. <laughs> at, at, a, at, a fr at a fraction of what it costs yeah. to produce energy. I mean, you get, for you sure. get ripped off. But at, at, least they, at least they don't just take it from you. At least you get some kind of kickback. But, I mean, this comes down to like... Uh, capitalism on a whole um you're talking about the big tech boom that's going on in arizona well, if you yeah. look at just society in the united states and the western world uh through like the 1950s 60s 70s where everything was hunky dory and you could be a milkman and buy, literally buy a house um off of milk or janitor's salary um that reality doesn't exist anymore you can't open a mom and pop shop and compete with walmart it's just it's not it's not viable anymore. It's, it's not almost non-existent. And even when you do become successful, most companies end up turning into giant corporations. They end up, you know, uh, you know, going for public uh, IPOs and 
and, and stuff like that and going on to the stock market which then yeah and businesses businesses a lot of them a lot of the good natured companies that I've got to see and be a part of here in Arizona over the last six years a lot of them the owners are still or the people running it are still holding on to it and not letting it go to the stock market which is really neat because then they're able to give profit sharing back to their employees mm -hmm. and there's a lot more community involvement like there's a work culture kind of like a Google but and there's hate, lots I, of them like that I hate to be a Debbie Downer but you will see that trickle away you it will is. It eventually has. over it time has. as even that that like you said like uh, you know these people they want to hold on to their business well there will come a point in time where they're 70 years old or 60 years old and they don't want to do business anymore and somebody's gonna offer them enough money that they're gonna be comfortable for the rest of their existence and probably their children's and they will probably more likely most of them maybe not all of them but most of them will sell and they will end up being part of a giant conglomerate that owns 300 different businesses and doesn't give a shit about you or I or their employees for that matter. See, I'm, so I'm it, one of those females, right. the rare females that are, are not materialistic. I'm really not. I like, I would go shop at the Dollar Tree before I would go shop oh, at I've seen where you and Walmart, James were having you know, lunch the other day. I oh, don't judge tree. me. <laughs> <laughs> that was me spoiling myself. That's different. <laughs> I, I'm just kidding. But, but you know, the, 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 uh, sorry to cut you off, but that's no the problem. thing. I think everybody should have the right to spoil themselves. The biggest problem for me, a lot of people want to go completely off the grid and move out to the forest and have nothing and be happy with that. That's fine for them. But I think that the biggest problem in, the, in society right now is that, you know, people with a certain income have more ability to take a vacation and go somewhere and and learn and, and embrace a culture somewhere else than somebody that can't afford to do that and those are the things that everybody should have have luxury be able to have luxuries in life if we have luxuries that exist in this world everybody should be privy to those same luxuries you don't have to accept that luxury you don't have to that doesn't have to be your thing but if we have those things why isn't everybody have the equal you know i agree um, entitlement to that like for everyone yeah choose what you want yeah i mean we have all this technology and everything you know but not everybody not everybody has access to that technology or to those you know freedoms uh that come with with money um people say money is not everything i completely but agree it is money makes the world go around and it's sad i mean for me i've been sick for the most part of the last two years i've lost cars houses ups, downs, material items. And I think that the last two years of my life, it's been extremely humbling for me as an activist to be completely stripped away of all those creature comforts and to have to rebuild a foundation off of humility. And for me, I mean, moving in, moving into um, a roommate situation or moving into um, a one-bedroom apartment again after living in a four-bedroom house, these are the things that remind us of who we are and lose the ability of being that consumer, you know what I mean? Because I would rather go out and buy a product that's made from um, an, a local activist for a Christmas present or um, buy something homemade from a farmer's market. <laughs> I am so against capitalism at this point. Because if we keep feeding the monster, absolutely. where are we going? Yeah. Ab ab absolutely. But at the same time, the, the problem there is that a lot of these goods that you're talking about that you would prefer to buy, because those people had to turn somewhere else to get what they needed to make these products, the costs are higher. Now, all sure. of a sudden you see movie stars have, you know, it's the people rich and glamorous that have more access to those, you know, uh, you know, uh, counterculture kind of things than, than we do because I hate to say it, but I got to go shop at Walmart all the time, not because I want to support Walmart, but because it's fucking cheaper at Walmart than it was, I did too. you know, at, at, at the fucking store down the road that, that is locally made and they handcrafted everything. But, you know, in order to cover their own costs, you know, they have to charge more, but I can't afford to pay more. It, yeah, you know? I, I I will buy. I'm always a good shopper when it when it comes to stuff like that. I mean, I don't I don't know. I'd rather I shop at Walmart. I like to shop at Walmart mostly just to people watch. But I mean, the prices are really cheap. I I hear there's so many different um, grocery store chains and they all have different prices. And I mean, for me, it's usually the most economical. And again, it's because 
we're all working hard and you're barely getting by. Arizona just passed ten dollar minimum wage and they're trying to take it from us now. Absolutely. Ten dollars and ten dollars an hour isn't even enough to like get by. No, it's not, not even close. Not even yeah, close. I went to the protest, the, the, I went to the protest the, in the march for, for it to be passed and to see them now trying to take it away, it's just like a huge slap in the face. There's so many people that finally get because I mean seven dollars an hour, ten dollars an hour. $7 are you guys ready to now. are you ready to be blown away? $50 All right, so you guys, you got your guys' minimum wage is ten dollars an hour. Where I live, it's twelve, which that sounds better. Do you know what the average cost of a house in the city I live in is? A lot. Just, just take a stab. The the half price or a rent. The price to buy a house is half a million dollars on average. I was going to say yeah. five hundred thousand. Yeah, because I'm That's- I'm from Southern California, and it was the same way. I mean, Arizona has houses for a hundred thousand. But I mean, you're gonna get a little bit of a fixer up, or you get you get a bit a little bit of land for it. But then again, you also have the red state completely. It's just bad. It's just Arizona. I mean, you have to be willing to take take that sacrifice to live in the desert. I'm we. I live in I live in a huge oil city. I. You guys know about the oil sands? No. They're no. all over the news all the time. It's like. Leonardo DiCaprio is here all the fucking time protesting against it and shit. Anyway, I live where the oil sands are. The Keystone XL pipeline? You yeah, I know that. that? Oh, okay, yes. well, the, the, where I live is where they're going to pump that from. This is the ground, this Jesus. is fucking ground zero of the fucking Keystone XL. That's where I live. It is built off of oil. It is next to Houston and Dallas, probably the fucking, it's one and a half million people, and it's entirely based off of fucking oil. And right now we're, we've been going through a recession, and my rent has dropped in the last three years from fifteen hundred dollars a month to eleven hundred. But I can guarantee it's not going to stay like that once the price of oil goes back up. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah, for sure. I pro- I promise you, when things start turning around here economically, my wages will not increase. Like I said, I've been off. I've I haven't had a raise at work in five years. Jeez. Five five years, and I still make way above what the average person does here, but still. It's like, it's not that they're catching up to me. It's that I'm degrading down closer to them. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's not that it's getting easier for them. It's that it's getting harder for me, which I was at the upper end of middle class. You know what I mean? Yeah. And now I'm more just at the middle, middle class, I guess you could say. I'm in and, poverty class. I've never been above that. <laughs> Well, and I, I feel I, I have nothing but sympathy for those people. Like I was saying, I don't understand. I, I, I feel terrible for anybody that is trying to get by like that. But the, the one of the biggest problems, and I hate to say it to anybody that's at the lower end, but the middle class disappearing is one of our biggest issues. Because if you eliminate the middle class, then all you oh, have is upper lower, and lower and upper. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, that, that that's when you're going to have more problems when there's no middle class at all. Or when it starts shrinking. See, in the poverty, the poverty level here, like what you have is California. California has gotten so expensive. One because it's coastal. Two because of um, so many corporations buying out rich property. All the other stuff that's going on through California. Most people can't afford to live in California no more, so they're moving towards Arizona. So many people in Arizona are transplants from Air, from California. It's ridiculous. Every well, other person not, you meet, literally. It's not so, even that I far. Mean, Every time I drive to California, I go through Arizona. I drive yeah. from Canada down there all the time. Yeah, or I used to I when I could afford it. I'm going back home <laughs> somehow. I, I used to drive down there when I could afford to. I haven't been there in four years, but... I don't know. I want to go to Cancun this summer. A lot of people say that, you know, you know, California is really expensive, you know, and I've, I've been all over California. If you stay out of the OC Me LA too. area, you generally can get find cheaper places. So. I was going to yes. buy a house. I was going to buy a house in Palm Springs, actually, because I was down there, and this is when the price of a house here was around $400,000, and I found a mansion built into the side of the mountain with a huge pool built into this deck that came off the side of the mountain and overlooked the, the valley down below, down into Palm Springs. And it was like $220,000. And I was like, fuck yeah. I was like, I'll just work half the year in Canada at my job and just spend the rest of the half of the year down there. I said, it'd be pretty much the same fucking thing. And it was so much cheaper. 
you guys don't understand. I went down there. I couldn't believe how cheap shit was in America compared to Canada. You, you know what really? we pay? We, you know what we pay for a gallon of gas? Like five bucks. Yeah, no, it's it's right now one dollar and ninety four cents. Not where I live. Yes. What the hell? Where the hell? What, what yeah, country? See, what country you live in, Rose? I live in Arizona. It's a patriot, Republican <laughs> state. I mean, of course right? it's cheap. You know, they, they don't. They, <laughs> I'm like right outside of a military base, you know, like, of course it's cheap. Yeah, no. I mean, as you go further into the city away from the military base, the gas prices actually go up. It's weird. Actually, I noticed that too. When I, when I, when I drive down there, all the places with like air force bases nearby on my drive down, the gas was always cheaper for some reason. No, it's probably because it's probably because of oil. The oil is, you know, they probably sell the same, um, the same gas to the military that they do to the, uh, but, surrounding places but like this is what too. this is what this is what pisses me off being where i'm from we actually in in the province i live in we have the second we have the second largest or canada as a whole as the second or third largest oil reserve in the world america's biggest uh, america buys more oil from canada than from anywhere else we ship it down to the united states as crude oil it's refined down there into gasoline and then they sell it back to us and what do we you, pay fucking five dollars a gallon for it? What do you think about the current the currency exchange right now, Jay? I know a lot of my friends who come. I in gotta from run Winnipeg, again, guys. Talk to you yeah. later. Have a good All night, right, Ron. A lot of my friends who come down here from Winnipeg for the summer aren't coming this year because of the. For every dollar they spend, they have to spend an extra thirty three cents because of the currency exchange. Yeah, yeah, no, it's fucked up. But uh, my mother in law just sent us money, so send us five hundred dollars American, so. I'm pretty stoked that that's going to turn into 700. Absolutely. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, that that's a big reason on why a lot of us Canadians aren't going south. Um, there was actually a point a few a couple of years ago where our money was worth more than American. A, a yes. Canadian dollar is worth a dollar ten or a dollar ten American, or no, a one dollar one American dollar is worth a dollar ten, whatever, something like that. Basically, so for every dollar we get ten cents extra, like. If we went down there, my dollar, my hundred dollars would be a hundred and ten dollars American, and everything was way cheaper. So I fucking right. I was all about going down there to spend some money. But uh, that's that's what I was saying earlier about Canada being a a huge oil. Uh, the one of the biggest reasons our dollar is so low is uh, the price of oil is low right now. So that means the Canadian dollar sucks. Um, I think it's good and bad. I think locally for me, it's made things more affordable. Um, inflation has decreased, um, but all of those things, the roots lie in those things in fiat currency and perpetual debt created off of money through centralized banking that is uh, new money created off of guarantees to be paid back on interest on loans um, from money that doesn't exist. Exactly. Um, but, that. But, money, uh, money that does not exist. Exactly. Yeah, but it's with our dollar being low and our economy not being as good as it had been in the last 10 years where we were far surpassing America um, on an economic level like that. Um, but uh, inflation has gone. So some things, if I want to buy American products, it, it has affected me in a negative way, but thankfully, uh, well, not thankfully, but um, America, just like Canada, has become a consumer nation. We don't manufacture fuck all anymore. We don't actually make anything. So my my worries about buying American products are pretty slim because you know you guys don't actually make anything anymore. Neither do we. But you want a label on it. Yeah, exactly. So um, you know, if I when I do want to spend money uh, on something that comes from America, it is it is a downturn. But like I said, my rent was fifteen hundred dollars three years ago on a two bedroom condo. Um, now I pay. I live in the exact same place, and I pay eleven hundred a month now. So I save three hundred dollars a month or four hundred dollars a month in rent, which you know is four thousand eight hundred dollars a year that I save. Um, so it it has its ups and its downs um, because our economy is based off of oil with oil not doing well for me i don't work in the oil industry so it's beneficial yeah but if you worked in the oil industry which i had a lot of friends who do or did um most of them lost everything 
So it was probably not very beneficial for them whatsoever. Yeah, it, it's it's pretty bad now. <clears throat> yeah, it's just a it's just a whole it's an endless cycle. You know what I mean? Um, we will see things uh, we will see things improve, and then we'll see in them crash and improve and crash and you know get just get stuck in an infinite loop and just become apathetic to it is is basically the way that that it works i think for the general public anyway um i try not to be that myself but uh you know i think a general apathetic um approach to everything is just saying man it's bad today it'll be good tomorrow if you didn't lose your house you didn't lose everything you own well things will turn around eventually things will get better and they will for a little while and then they'll get bad again and you know it's a vicious what? little circle isn't it it is but every time they get bad they get a little bit worse than they were the last time it got bad <laughs> i've noticed and, that, unfortunately you know so but uh yeah it is what it is at this point in time. I guess you know it's up to up to us that are are actually putting up some kind of fights and trying to mount some kind of resistance. It's up to us to continue doing so, and uh, you know not get too discouraged about it. Um, you know, like I said, I hate to be a Debbie Downer, but sometimes I just got to be a realist about things. And unfortunately, you're very accurate, you know, in what you've said, because you know the only way to get anywhere is to fight for it and, and it looks like it's headed that direction so yeah well we got to keep on fighting uh you know i think i think one of the biggest reasons hello technical error let's see uh-oh hello oh his phone must have died I would say so. You're not even showing up. I can see you. I, I can I can see me too, but I don't see you. <laughs> oh, that was weird. <laughs> Facebook censorship, or I'm sorry, censorship from uh, from Google. <laughs> Where's his icon? I don't even see it. Oh, That's so weird. <clears throat> sorry what were you guys talking about oh, sorry i was dealing with this somebody on the somebody's i don't even know what, what kind of mind frame they're in <laughs> hello yeah i'm here that's odd that is very odd We got 13 minutes till they cut us off, so. What were you guys, <laughs> what were you guys talking about? Well, we were talking about, um, God, what, what the hell were we talking about? <laughs> the current, or, or the currency, currency exchange between uh, Canada and the United States, and um, it's weird. Don't you guys have to? Don't you have to pay a fee um, once you once you transfer uh, the currency from one to another? Yeah, uh, everything that you purchase, I believe, uh, if you come from uh, Canada, uh, you have to pay a fee for everything that you purchase. And it, uh, one of my friends was telling me it's about uh, it's about thirty three cents right now. You have to pay tariffs. You have to pay tariffs on it. Yeah. Gotcha. So guys, we got like. About twelve minutes left. Well, it's been a slice, guys. Um, we had some pretty good, uh, pretty good conversation on here tonight. I think we touched on a lot of relevant shit. Um, you know, so I, I, I was more than happy to to make everybody's acquaintance here. All, although me and Mark here have uh, we've made our acquaintance in the past, and I added you. Oh, I see you accepted my friend request. Um, are you Tyler? Are you Tyler Durden on Facebook? No, nah, I'll, I'll send you a link in the chat to my to my real profile. <laughs> All right, sounds good, man. Because <laughs> I I do remember a guy going by the name Tyler Durden. That was me. For, Same here. That, 
That was you. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I do I, remember I, that. I had I had my, I had that account killed like twice, and then after yeah. like and uh, somebody tried doing the SS seven um, hack on my on my profile. You yeah. Know, the, yeah, I know because it was it was it was I was just like, dude, everybody wants to get in this profile. Fuck this. <laughs> after it got disabled, after it got disabled, I was just like. Yeah, I'm not going to be Tyler Durden anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you, you get you got to do what you got to do, right? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I actually do remember seeing you around probably, you know, over the last year or two, anyhow, here and there. I, I, when you, when I saw the name Tyler and I saw the picture, I was like, huh, I wonder if that's the same guy. Yeah, I, I've still got a Tyler Durden on my uh, on my uh, friends list. <laughs> um, yeah, there was a guy, he's had his account like forever, but I think mine, I think I had the one that was just like this one, but it was in color. <laughs> that was me. Yeah. yeah, I think, I think that was you. Yeah, probably. But yeah, it's been, it, it's definitely been good. Uh, like I said, I'm usually a regular on Daniel's show. Um, those guys are pretty good guys over there, uh, regardless what some people might think about them. Me and Daniel um, are, are pretty decent friends. I, li- I like to troll him occasionally just when I'm bored. And he, yeah. take, he takes it, you know, lightheartedly, like, as he should, you know, because it's it's not meant to be me, and it's meant to, you know, have fun with him, not at his expense. And he understands that. And Daniel's been around for a very long time. Yes, he um, has. He's in the know. He's been involved in a lot of things, whether people give him credit. I don't think he searches for any credit from anybody, but – uh you know, we have some pretty good topics over there. There have been some, you know, less than savory uh, conversations, I'm sure. Uh, but once again, we're anti-censorship as a nons, or even if you're not a non, uh, I know even some of the, even those guys at the Hate Factory, I know how much they are hated. But uh, a lot of, in a lot of ways, in a lot of ways, whether people like to admit it or not, those guys embody what Anonymous started out as. Absolutely, uh, I agree with that 100%. Yeah, they were the anonymous was once uh, referred to as the internet hate machine. So uh, you know the hate factory. I'm not sure if that's where they got their moniker from, but uh, um, I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt it. And as Sammy Warren himself, I've had some pretty good conversations with. He's actually intel- intelligent individual. Jeff Kenyon, the guy is a lot different. He actually we live in the same city. I know him personally. I know him in real life. He's. Uh, He's a lot different to talk to on the level when you know the guy than he is on the internet. These guys just like to troll. People get their feelings hurt too much sometimes. I think uh, it is the internet. <laughs> you know, and me, me and Sammy were friends for quite a long time. I, you know, I, I, I don't know what happened. I just kind of separated myself from, you know, the hate factory because of some personal issues. And I kind of think Sammy took it the wrong way. So yeah. maybe that'll all wrinkle itself out later on down the road, I'm sure. Well, I, I wasn't too fond of the hate factory, and that was based on Kev Dushno. Yeah. Because uh, I, I don't much care for that guy, but, you know, I'll just leave it at that. But uh, I know he was part of them, so I just didn't associate with any of them based on the fact uh, uh, that that he was uh, involved with them, and so I just avoided them. But, you know, after having actual conversations with a lot of those guys, I've come to respect some of them. Um, I might not agree with what they do all the time, but uh, I don't get butt hurt over it either. Uh, so, I mean, uh, and to any new fags out there listening, if you are going to get upset about, it's really not worth your time. I promise you, you have more important things to worry about than a bunch of trolls. These guys thrive on people that get butt hurt. Um, so if you don't want to get fucking trolled to shit, uh, just don't listen to them. <laughs> don't pay attention to them. So it all boils down to either we're going to have censorship or we're not going to have censorship. Me personally, there will be no censorship, and I, I will not censor anyone, you know, and nobody censors me, and we're, we're all good. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep, 100%. 100%. I mean, I might not agree with what people say. In fact, quite often I downright despise what people have to say, um, but, uh, you know, uh, do, Mark, do you remember Jazz, Ned, Kelly, Immortal? Yes. Um, he made a post, uh, this was years back, but he pissed off a whole lot of people. And he said, he said, I do not support white supremacists. He's like, I do not support racism. He's like, but as a proponent of free speech, he's like, I do support their right to say whatever the fuck they want. I remember he's like, 
he and people fucking laid into him over that. He lost a lot of like, friends, a lot of friends over it. Yeah, he did, but he was right in 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 some kind of way. You know, I mean, um, I hate I hate racist people, but I still feel that you know, I think that those types of things are more. Uh, you know, miseducation. They're not yeah, informed. Yeah. They're not educated. I, you know, and I will go far as far as this. I, I despise racism. I despise bigotry. But I'll tell you what. I, I love the memes. Whether it's about a white guy with a crack pipe or a black guy with a with whatever. I, I <laughs> love the the memes. Put us, you know, they they crack me up because I don't take it for that. I, I see it for what it is. Because if yeah. we, can, if all of us, what, regardless of color, gender, creed, denomination, religion, whatever, if we can't look inwards and laugh at ourselves as, yeah. as a person or as a species, as a whole, whatever, then we're lost. Yeah. Exactly. And as a species, we're flawed. We're Absolutely. not perfect. We're certainly not perfect, and we never will be, I don't think. I highly doubt that, um, unless we achieve some kind of energy force that is beyond our physical being um i don't think we'll be ever perfect and you know those things are going to exist um like like you said i just i can't condone hatred towards anybody for anything but um like i said earlier we're all born with free will and if you know if that's your free will then so be it i will try to educate you otherwise i might even call you an idiot and a piece of shit for for sure. saying so, for thinking so, but that's my freedom of speech to say so. That's my not being censored to tell you you're a fucking jackass. But you know, <laughs> definitely, <fuck>. definitely. <laughs> you know, so but it it is what it is, and that that is their rights. Um, you know, as a human being, to have those perceptions, and it's up to the rest of people if you don't agree with it to try and prove them wrong, and uh, you know, give them a reason to to feel otherwise. I hear you. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to peace the fuck out of here. It sounds like there's not much time anyway. So, no, there's not. Um, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, definitely. I, uh, I, I, I will be back. And congratulations um, I do. again. Yeah, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it, man. My wife's the best ever. Uh, Tara Smith, I don't know if you guys know her, but she's, uh, she's a fucking genius. That's my wife, and, she, man, she keeps me going. <laughs> it sounds familiar. The name sounds familiar. She's anonymous, right? Yeah, she she uh not so much anymore. Well you won't find too much on but yeah, that's that's where we met. So that is that is how we met. She's a research geek at to put it lightly. <laughs> she spends a lot of time um educating herself and sharing that information with a lot of people. Good for her. I mean that, that's very important to to, you know, seek knowledge wherever one can. Exactly. Yep. And she is definitely knowledgeable, more so than I am quite a lot, quite often. <laughs> I, I turn to her sometimes when I'm on uh, when I'm on air, whether it be here or, or on Daniel's show, and I'm like, "Am I right? <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll be here. Am, am I telling a lie or am I right?" <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, guys. I'll talk to you guys soon. I'll I'll be sure to be back. I know uh, Angelina had asked me a couple times to come on. I've been pretty busy with a bunch of stuff. I've been focusing a lot of my energy on tech stuff, but uh, I will be back um, and I enjoyed talking to you guys. Okay. Same here. You have a good yeah. night. You guys too. All right. Take her easy. Okay. You too. Bye. All right. So I'm going to roll out. I'm going to exit this call and I'm going to do out with the exit scenes. And stuff. Excellent. Excellent. All right, Excellent. Cool. All right. You have night. a good night. Good night.